hey, up top, everyone, I just wanted to give like an immediate top of the show plug to the strike efforts in Hollywood, WGA and SAG-AFTRA. Uh, we talked about it a bit in our last episode in the middle of it, but uh, the bottom line is that these workers are making things that continue to gain revenue that the studios are capitalizing on. And mm-hmm. it's it's absurd that these people make these things and then don't see a cut of it later. Uh, and you know, previously before the streaming era, residuals were a thing. And now they're not a thing. And there's a lot of different issues at stake. Um, but residuals is a huge one where you see these people getting no money. They get these residual checks for pennies. All it's right, like, right, well, why right. even send a goddamn check at that point? It's yeah, like if yeah. these shows are getting sold, bought and sold over and over again. And this there's tons of money going into the studio and they're not sharing it with the people who made it. And that's just the bottom line. Is uh, And there's also just so many people who can't make ends meet uh, and are, mm. are doing our writing and actors. Yeah. There's a lot of rich writers and rich actors, but the vast majority of them. Yeah, I'm going to say there's even more, <laughs> there's even more, way more, <laughs> so, way yeah. more. You think you, you just have a, people have a skewed perception because they think of movie stars as actors, but there mm. are so many actors. Think about all the other actors in things who you don't know their names. There's so many of them. And, right. uh, and, and back in the day, the residual checks used to mean, the sustainability of that career where they could, uh, even if they didn't get a job in a long time, could at least pay for groceries, pay for their rent. Uh, and mm-hmm. now, uh, those checks are nothing. They're meaningless. And, right, it's, right. and you know, work, work is few and far between. And this, but these things are still making money. They're still earning massive amounts of money. Profits are at record highs for all of these studios. The yeah. CEOs are making obscene amounts of money. And if you don't support, the creators who are doing it, you're basically just supporting the people who are hoarding money and right. using their the labor of these people to to just fill their own pockets. It sucks. Uh, so mm-hmm. we'll put in a link to the description, some uh, a link to some resources that you can help support the WGA and the SAG-AFTRA in their strike efforts. Um, and yeah, that's just what we want to say up top. And we, uh, I don't know, should we, should we, should we just call it? Just do that, do that quick cold open <laughs> yeah. and get, get yeah, fuck <laughs> it. <laughs> Why yeah. not? All right. <laughs> Episode over. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, let's cue the theme song and get to it. I've been watching them for years. It's always been something that fit with all the animated characters that's doing their own bits. With a fry who's in the future and a family guy that sucks. It's the father from a Hello Burger family that is about to show and spies is the same guy, except he totally is f- And diverse. Let's watch cartoons that could. Uh, yeah, that's bananas. <laughs> As rough. <laughs> What the f*** is up, everybody? Welcome to Cartoons That Curse. I am your host. Wait, how do we do this again? God, I'm so rusty. This is only you were doing it. You bad. had it. You're, you're no, the host. I'm, no, I normally say this is the show. This is what the, the show what is. is. The cartoons say know fuck. What the show is yeah. the cartoons say fuck. This yeah. is this is cartoons say fuck show. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what we should have named this podcast. Yeah. Cartoons say fuck. Cartoons say fuck. Uh, welcome to the show. My name is Johnny. I'm your co-host. I'm here with Tariq. Tariq, how you doing? I'm all right. I'm all right. Ready to, uh, Hell yeah. Ready to do the last, the last of the Mohegans, the last of the last of the format. <laughs> the last of the Mohegans. Yeah, we did not. We actually didn't watch Futurama today. We instead watched the last of the Mohegans. <laughs> no, no, wait, who made that movie? Is that, is that the, who made that? Is the, it's uh oh it's michael mann michael mann (laughs) directed directed and written by michael mann um wild no we didn't watch the last of mohicans we watched futurama this is our last Mm -hmm. we finally you know started the pod with futurama we're ending this format with futurama uh though we will still be talking about futurama after this we're going to be covering all the new episodes of the new season individually look forward to that uh, means we're going to be getting more episodes out to you, probably shorter ones, but more episodes. Um, but this is the last 13 episodes of Futurama, the second as half of, right of their 
as of right now, <laughs> as of right now, as of this moment, which will change in two days. Yeah. yeah I'm about to <laughs> and, <say> actually, <laughs> and actually, when you're listening to this, there will probably there will be an episode of the new season out. Like we'll probably release this Monday, which is the same day that the new episode uh, comes out. So, you know, we are lying to you actively. Yeah. Right. Um, sorry about that. It's true for us still, but you know. It's true for us. It's true yeah. for us in the past. You know, we're we're talking. We're coming to you from the past. Mm. Uh, so these are the last thirteen episodes. The back half of the seventh production season. This the second and final production season of the Comedy Central run. The fourth and final broadcast season of the of the Comedy Central run. Um, man, I was just thinking about how fascinating it is that that Futurama has has and probably will just exist on every in every form possible like first even just as a tv show network then dvd movies Mm. then cable Cable. now streaming uh all different (laughs) all different things uh and then on top of that it it went through the transition of uh of a widescreen to uh from uh from full by through the widescreen that's right it did uh and then there's also a video game there's a mobile game. There's That's a podcast. True. There's a crossover episode with The Simpsons. Right. There are comic books. There's a crossover comic book with The Simpsons. Uh, am I missing anything, anyone? Any others? Oh, there's mm. there's mobile game advertisements that are fully animated scenes that not a lot, not enough people have seen. People should watch those. They're kind of funny. And um, there's, uh, I was gonna say that the only thing they didn't do was uh was cell animation but there's simpsons episodes that are cell animated that right. reference future trauma oh god it happens one of those. three times? there are like we've just de- we've times. determined that there are like three episodes that have cells of futurama characters and i want two one so bender. badly there's two benders two, two benders and there's a bender and there's a yellow fry yellow fry <laughs> i would love to have yellow fry oh my I god that. i want that like nasty shot uh with uh it's like <laughs> it's like it's like Eddie Murphy from the PJs and like Bender and like Hank and, yeah. uh, and the the Fox Telethon thing. The Fox yeah, Telethon, the that. PB. Or, yeah, yeah, that's right. The right, the Fox Telethon. Oh man, um, you look. If anyone has a lead on those cells, let me know. Mm. I will uh, pay more money than I should to get the only one. Th- that that <laughs> clip doesn't have. Uh, it doesn't have Family Guy characters, but like they take that like. They take that like jab at Family Guy, like saying that it's like like right. crude or whatever. But they just showed a logo. It'd be cool because that would mean that those are the only like Family Guy cells that exist. If that was to happen, right for uh, sure. But um, alas, I uh, you know let me know. Let me know if any of you have uh, a lead on those cells. Uh, if you do, um, <laughs> I'll buy them. I'll pay a bunch of money for it. <laughs> okay. uh, clearly, we, yeah. <laughs> Too much money, frankly. Too much money. Um, anyways, uh, so these are the last 13 episodes. Before the season started, you know, I think they had I think they knew, they knew writing this that it was going to be the end. It wasn't announced mm. until let's see, uh April 22nd, which is um which is just a f- couple months before this season premiered, or this half season premiered. Um, it, that's when they announced this would be the final season, but the writers and producers must have known, especially given the subject matter of a lot of these final episodes, like obviously the finale is a finale, but like, you can just tell from some of these episodes that they're doing, like, they're kind of doing their like farewell tour in a lot of ways for certain characters. Mm. Um, and to, to varying degrees of success, a couple of them work great. Uh, but this is an interesting run. I um I find this run I I think it's mostly on par with the previous stretch with with it like inching ahead because it ends so damn strong. Uh like the the end of this run, the last four for me elevate this whole stretch. I mean, and it's like it does go a long way to say that it, you know, it it literally ends with it's all almost all of its strongest episodes that that goes a long way and ends the whole show with, you know, with its strongest, right. some of its strongest episodes in the comedy central era. Um, and so, yeah, it's, uh, I think that like 
there's I think the the lows of this one didn't bore me nearly as much as they did in the last one. And I think that's oh, really? the difference. Yeah. I think like because like there's there's like that fox shit in the last yeah, one. Yeah, man, there's that is like, a boring uh, one. Uh, I do think this stretch is better. <laughs> yeah. Like I, I I like there's ones clearly that I did, like don't like as much. But yeah. like they're like I, that like like the Fox one and like the election one were like like peak, like, oh man, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna watch this. Like uh and there aren't I don't think there's something like this in here. You know what I I just remembered nobody commented about it or anything like that, but I literally just remembered that we weren't using your old reviews. That was something right. we were doing. <laughs> I actually thought about that in the middle of the episode and I was like, mm, I don't even want to. And oh, also word. I think, I think, I don't know if it was in that stretch or this stretch. I fell off and didn't oh, okay. do them all. But let's look, I bet I'm willing to bet that at least for meanwhile, I got, I got mm-hmm. mine in there. So I'll take a look at the end of this. Um, but let's just jump into the episodes. Let's uh, let's go into these. This first one, this first one is one that I do find boring personally, um, and that's a 40 percent lead belly. They're, this is this is an episode that has concepts I really like and some visual stuff I really like, but the story kind of uh, it kind of just it kind of just meanders for me. I'm a little I get a little bored. Oh, by it. How do the, you feel about this one? This is the folk singing. Yeah, the folk singing. I, I, I watched the could I, I watched I watched watch these, that I watched, order. Yeah, by accident. I watched the uh, the next one first by accident. Uh what did I I thought that I was like not really into um the first half of it, but like when it kind of started to get like inherently ridiculous, like I kind of got on board around the end. Uh, with all the fake outs and stuff like that. Uh, For sure. But I... Okay. So when I was watching the Black Top one, I was... Because I, I was watching that at first thinking it was the premiere. I, I remember watching it thinking like... I don't know. When we came in here last time, I was talking about how that episode started and how it had... This was like like such an like iconic way to open a season granted they weren't technically right. open in a season but they, I, I think at this point they, they would have known that these were going to be split so that one of these would have had to like come first i feel like sure um so and when i was watching that one i was like ah, oh, this is all right but it's not like you know they it's not really um it doesn't have that kind of start it just kind of like the episode just kind of starts but then when watching this one this definitely doesn't seem like a season premiere yeah, I completely, sure. I completely get why they switched it. <laughs> like, I, I, right. I probably would have advised the same thing to be honest. I do too, especially looking at like I remember how they advertised 2D Blacktop, advertising the whole dimensional drift thing. That is mm. a more exciting sci-fi Futurama idea than right. <laughs> than Bender singing folk songs. You know, right, right, um, right. So there's, yeah, that it it totally makes sense why they flip these around. I get it, especially given that these were all you know, the, these, this, these order was split in two. Um, but yeah, you know, I mean, it's a, it's sometimes, I guess we talked about that in the original run too, uh, in regards to finales, like how, how, what was often written as a season finale in the original Fox era actually didn't really feel particularly climactic or big, right? Like mm. is in the production order, but they did sometimes switch them to, so they sometimes Fox switched around to have a big season finale that was actually not meant to be a season finale. So, right, right, right. you know, there's, I guess there's pros and cons to each order. I prefer the order that they were written in. Um, but this episode's interesting. I think my biggest problem with it is like, I don't mind them doing, I don't mind them doing, I kind of like them doing the bender trying to be a folk singer thing. Obviously they've done that a few times. It's been a running thing since like the second episode of the show, but I think I find all the music kind of boring in this one. Like, oh uh, yeah, okay. I yeah. like I just like or every anytime he's playing, I'm just like, oh, this is like. I think if this were even slightly more enjoyable music, I could get on board. <laughs> but no, nah, I think I, I think I yeah. co-sign that. I think I co-sign that. Like, uh, 
Yeah, it's because it, it, it before. Uh, how am I? How am I trying to explain this? Like it was. It, it sometimes they'll do this thing where they'll like instead of like doing like super creative futuristic versions of like modern day shit they'll just kind of do modern day shit and then like make it a robot and then like kind of call it a day like and there's like a lot of that in this one um so that's why like even like the like yeah it wasn't it wasn't like like sci-fi or anything like that a lot of it was just like okay i guess this is just like an episode of like, oh, say like The Simpsons, if Homer wanted to be a folk singer, like uh, the first half of this, at least, there's like barely, there's like there's like little you would have to change until until they start totally. to do the uh, like the hard drive, which I, I thought that shit was interesting, like the hard drive shit. And yes, like, yeah, the three D yeah, printing, 3D the printer. like the the what what he ends up singing is being three D printed and coming true. Right. That's cool. Like that. That's a cool sci fi twist. Um, but one of the other things like that a li- frustrated me a little bit about this premise is like the whole idea is that Bender hasn't lived a life w- that's given him things to sing about, but like what? Look at his that's, life. Yeah, dude. That's not, that's not, that's not. <laughs> He's <laughs> Bro met God like for real. Like right. come on. <laughs> for real. Think about what if, what if he was writing songs about, about Futurama, like about the stuff yeah. that he's gone through in Futurama. He's died. Bender has died <laughs> and come back to life. Yeah. He's he's got so much. He's got so much in his life that like he, he, I think, he was a car at one point. Right. You know? he became, <laughs> there's so many things. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Oh man. Um so you know. I understand the idea is that like, especially because Bender is generally grifting, trying to cut corners, trying to, you know, trying to, right, he's got right. all of the, these, these matches personality, but it's also just like, part of me is just like, okay, but come on. He's got, he got a million uh, yeah. things to write about. <laughs> I do. I do. I get it. Cause like, especially like, like literally like last season, he like struggles with the concept of free will. And I right. think that in itself is enough to sing about for a lifetime. You know what I'm saying? Right. So like, uh, yeah, I get it. I do get it. I get what you mean. For sure. Um, I love, I do like a lot of visuals in this. Like they're, when they're at the folk club, like I like the color palette at the club when like they're playing music. There's some good looking stuff there. I love the concept of like, I just love the concept of that space train that hits the prism and then it splits into all the other lines. Uh, and just, oh, I don't know. Right. I just like visually a train in space. I like that. Cool. Space trains are cool. <laughs> uh, makes, makes no sense. It's still cool. Um, do you notice this episode has another one of those uh, Fry can't tell when Leela's trying to fuck jokes? <laughs> yeah, I actually wrote that one down. <laughs> she like does the like yawn yeah. and tries to like put her on. He's like, you're right, like, you're right, it is late. It's time to go home. It's <laughs> <laughs> uh, pretty funny. But also like just I like that they that's just a background gag. It's a st- like pretty much firmly they are together. You know, they, like, do, they, they do something in an episode that I like. Uh, so I so it was the same shit you were talking about. And I was like, "Wow, yeah, this is like the end of the show. Why did they do that?" <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure, we'll get there. Um, let's see. I yeah, I don't know. Like, this is again, this is an episode that like conceptually, there's so much I like about it, and just that executionally, I am always a little bit bored by it. And that's pretty much my my take <laughs> on Word. on forty percent lead belly. Yeah, I don't I don't even I don't even think I can like. I think I, I think I agree there. Like I said, the back the back half, I really like. Like I like the uh, I like Bender in that um in that science that nerd that scientist. I like I like them going into Bender's porn folder. Uh, shall we adjourn to the porn <laughs> folder? Um, <laughs> Bender got ten terabytes of porn. Uh, if you know anything about <laughs> space, that is ridiculous. He needs help. <laughs> hey, we don't know how big those video files are in the future. <laughs> That's true, man. That's true. Oh, man. Um, man cool. Doing, right, what doing you- videos and then like getting a movie and then like, like why is why is Roll Bounce 10 gigabytes? I don't like 
how is this efficient? <laughs> like, right. Just like certain files being so big is the worst. Yeah. I mean, they always do that where there's just certain things that like, like, obviously, I don't think computers would look or operate like that in the future. They're not going to be like that, but they want oh, yeah, it to yeah, be yeah. somewhat recognizable and relatable. Oh, no. I mean, I'm, I mean, like, like us, like us doing videos mm. and like getting files and like, you'll get like, uh, I don't know, you'll get like, I think like, I like my copy of the Irishman is like 14 gigs or some shit. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, if you get a 4K, if you get a 4K giant file, it's true. I, uh, <laughs> I got that, um, I downloaded a 4K, that 4K upscale of Mission Hill. And every episode is like 12 gigabytes. <laughs> That's the worst. <laughs> it's, it's absurd. It's, it, the worst. it's crazy. I mean, like, you kind of understand why, but like, mm-hmm. let me make sure that's true. Yeah, but it's like, it's it's crazy. Um, okay. Let's, you, any more about this one? You want to move on? Oh, wait. I got one thing. You missed, dude, you missed uh, for your for your hip hop and animation <laughs> video. You missed the raps <laughs> from the end of this one. <laughs> raps. <laughs> Do, at the what end, raps? remember, did you miss it? At the end, Bender and Silicon Red are like rapping. I might have missed it. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? You're probably probably better. Better off. Better off. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there's yeah. There's a couple lines in this. Uh, in the I think I think there's one in this run that I wrote down where I was like, oh, I could have I could have used that. There's a there's a they do. If, uh, there's a lot of like future like hip hop Futurama references in this in, in like these Comedy Central episodes. Yeah. Even just last last episode we were talking about uh what is what does Zap say? Fish Zap he says uh, uh now let's go get naughty by nature or something That's like right. that. That's it's right. Like, yeah, oh, you did say fuck. it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> All right, let's move on to 2D blacktop. Or um I do like the idea that like the professor has a connection to the ship. I know we've seen some of his older ships, but he's had the ship for a while. And I kind of like that idea. Like he, they, they, they break the ship. They need a new one. Professor is like, nah, this is my, this is my old car. This is my car. That's been with me for, for years, you know? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, there's a good joke when he f- saves it from getting scrapped where they're scrapping speed racers car. I like that joke. Uh, I wrote that too. <laughs> well, first of all, <laughs> I would like to say that this was the uh, this is the second time in this um, comedy social run that they referenced Speed Buggy. Uh, oh yeah, and, yeah. Because you you remember in the uh, what is that episode? Is it called Law and Oracle? Is that what it's called? Uh, yes, that is the uh, that's the that's the cop one, the police. Right. One, yeah. yeah. And remember. Oh, when, I they, do when they devised that, yeah. that plan, Fry says, I heard, I saw it on an episode of Speed Buggy. <laughs> and the only That's reason so I remember funny. that is because I remember Googling to see if that was a joke or if there really is an episode of Speed Buggy that I could cross reference. And I think it's just a joke. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right. I think you're right. <laughs> um,. Uh, let's see what else we got in this one. Okay. So I like, I like the idea of the 2d drifting. Like, I think that's neat. I think that's a cool mm-hmm. sci-fi idea, I guess. Um, and it's kind of funny to pair Farnsworth up with like the street gang, <laughs> this like street racing yeah. gang. It's a funny, it's a funny pairing. I like um, the ridiculous melodramatic arc they give that one girl that's in a group about her dad. <laughs> she's like, she's like, my dad was abusive, not physically abusive, but verbally abusive. It's a lot. Right. I can't really talk about it while drifting. Like, and, <laughs> and then she gets a call from her dad at the end of the episode. At the end. It's, it's like the, it's like the resolution. <laughs> it's funny. I like that shit. <laughs> um, the. Uh, they it is funny how they just kept hammering that joke <laughs> like like it's like during the race and then she ends and she like starts talking to the professor about it the whole episode it's like it's like a major yeah. subplot is pretty oh, funny uh, and then what is he, uh, <laughs> what does he say he says uh he says maybe she'll see me more as a more than a father figure <laughs> yes <laughs> like <what he> said. <laughs> <laughs> so stupid um I, and then I guess, and I guess the other subplot of this episode is is like the is Leela getting the new minivan minivan uh, ship that just does all the, the work for the him, and then their life that, becomes boring. Looks like a fucking litter box. Yeah, yeah. I 
I think the funniest thing about that story is like her becoming the mom and Fry and Bender becoming kids. Like the, her dropping them off at karate class is funny to me. <laughs> like, <laughs> them both in their them both in their in their karate robes, including Bender, is super yeah, funny. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, oh, also they mentioned a new Shrek movie. They're still making those pieces of shit in the yeah, future. I know, <laughs> but like, I, okay. Um, I think it's when I, 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 I think it's when they're like 2D and he says the newest Shrek movie won't look nearly as good. What the fuck? Mm-hmm. What the fuck is this joke? Because mm-hmm. <laughs> like, if, joke you know, makes no sense. even even like because my because we talked about them like punching up at the Matrix. I don't think they're punching up at Shrek at all. But I right. do think that regardless well, was- of how you feel about Shrek movies, they all look pretty. Like they always yeah, look good. The first one I think <laughs> looks pretty dated, it's, but, it's but the rough, second one's a substantial. A one. Second one's a substantial upgrade. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but but isn't that a joke about how they're in two D now? So that so that it's almost like they're saying now Shrek will be in two D and it won't look good, which is weird because a it probably would look better, and b <laughs> the show is in two D. Right. <laughs> and, and it's like there's a lot of layers to this. That I don't I, know why. So, don't, yeah, whatever. Don't really get. Um. So the end of the episode when they smash together and they're all mm. 2D, I think that stuff is neat. But the thing that I hate about it is how it all plays like a like it's like it's a fucking educational video for children where <laughs> they're like they're very like they're explaining the incredibly basic concepts of what happens now that they're in 2D. It's like and it plays out like, oh, this is like teaching yeah, kids about the different dimensions true. you know that yeah. is true yeah because he because especially ah, especially the part there's a part where bender tries to walk past leela and he's like i can't do that and like yes exactly uh, yeah i didn't even think about it like that but yeah that's exactly what it is <laughs> yeah i always i always found that part this part a little uninterested well, like interesting but not particularly good and this time i kind of was able to concept like it put it into words like oh this is just like it feels like they're rudimental like it's a rudimentary explanation of 2d versus 3d and it's like too it's too simplistic it's like they're they're really talking down to the audience a little bit you know word um but like this episode does have cool ideas there's things about this episode i like don't love uh but yeah pretty good pretty pretty decent decent episode you got anything yeah, else about I, this one? I um, <clears throat> the race is awesome. The first one when he like yeah. calls out those uh, when he calls out those um, those guys, that shit is awesome. Like I love for sure how that how that shit is. Uh, that was like when again I watched this first. That was when I was like, oh okay, I can see why you would do this first because this is like pretty cool. Like so I, I I totally got it. That all that shit was cool. And also this episode focus making it focus on the ship it kind of showed me which is i guess something that i've kind of like held on to like subconsciously but i've never like actually like vocalized it like the the ship is such an iconic design like it really is like the the futurama ship in general i know it's like it's It's such such an iconic design. design yeah i never like the color like everything about it is just like you could just even see that color and be like, oh, is that the ship? Like it doesn't even have to be like an image of the ship; it could just be the color, right? Like that's how iconic the imagery is. Uh, but it's true. Yeah, I can't think like, of a single other thing that like that color is I is so associated with the ship to me. Yeah, I can't think of specific, a single other yeah. thing I would associate it with. Um, you know what I would love to do is go back. I can't believe they never made a few drama art book. I would love to go back and see some of the earlier designs for the ships. I bet mm. there's some on the DVD. I because I know yeah, DVD more than likely. Art. Yeah, more than likely. Yeah. Um, man, remember when DVDs yeah. used to come with like they used to come with the scripts and the special features? Yeah, the the yeah. um the Futurama one has the the first script in there, and there's some differences in the jokes. Yeah, um, the, uh, the Sim- Simpsons DVDs did that for like, I don't know, like two, three years. They would put the scripts right. on there. Um, yeah, I, I would I would love I would love if they bring that shit back. Because I like I like to see shit like that. Me too. They don't do enough special features in general anymore. Um, I'm also sad that like I know they're going to try to do it, but I don't I expect we will never get another Futurama DVD because like original 
streaming original shows just tend to not get DVD releases. Every and, every once in a while, if the thing is popular enough, because like I don't yeah, like there's a there's like there's like a DVD of the first two seasons of BoJack. I think I think they just put the first. Yeah, two oh, I have it. I got that Blu-ray. Yeah. They were supposed to do more, um, but that's the reason they were able to do that is because since it was such an early original series for Netflix, uh, Tornante that company negotiated a really good contract where they had both. They had. They also had the ability not only to put it on Blu-ray if they wanted, but they had the ability to. Um, they were they were able to sell it in syndication. That's BoJack aired on oh, on Comedy Central, Comedy Central for, yeah, for a yeah, year, yeah. and they had they cut it down and stuff. But um, does it not air anymore? I thought this. I thought it still does. I thought it still did air. Nah, I don't think it's aired on anything since it was. I, and I think they only did the first two or three seasons on. Comedy Central. I oh. am so mad that I didn't rip those. Uh, those with the little, the little of Comedy the show. Central CC in the in the corner and shit. Yeah, and then also just to see how they cut it down, like because because the show is like twenty five minutes a pop, so they had to cut out three mm. minutes a piece. I'm just so curious what made the cut and what didn't, and how it plays uh, in that run. That's because I'm just like hyper fixatingly. Uh, <laughs> curious about that kind of bullshit but you think they'll put the the new they'll air the new futuramas somewhere those one or something um that's a good question because i looked um, on the uh on the on the hulu thing it says that the two that are coming out are 25 um so like yes. they would they would have to shave they're those, longer I guess. Yeah. yeah they would have to trim it down but you know they were always they're used to it. They would trim, they would cut jokes out for Fox back in the day uh, mm-hmm. to to hit syndication timing. Uh, same with The Simpsons used to do that. There's so many like yeah. I used to watch. I used to watch versions of the Sim. I mean, I I would I grew up watching The Simpsons in syndication, and like so many jokes were cut out that I didn't know until I watched them on DVD later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, the fam- family guys like that too. Like those, I was listening to some commentaries the other day. Yeah, and like it was. It's and even like if you watch fam, if you watch certain episodes of Family Guy on Hulu, they'll have the DVD version up there instead. Uh, so right. the episodes would be longer, and it's always a trip watching one of those, like an episode that you know, like like the back of your hand, and then like it's like they just say something that you've never heard before. It's like right, what the fuck, For sure. <laughs> yeah. Or like I grew up watching Arrested Development on DVD, and that show has. <laughs> The pilot, they have like an extended, uh, unrated pilot that's like uncensored. And mm-hmm. some of the jokes, they use alternate takes. And some of the jokes, they change with alternate takes. They just completely change the jokes. And I'm so used to that version that when I see the regular version, it like throws me off to hear <laughs> to hear the yeah, different versions. You. Yeah. Um. All right. Let, you want to move on to the next one? T the Terrestrial? Yeah, let's do it. This one's interesting because... <clears throat> So first of all, that little kid, this little Omicronian kid, Jur, is the is the little one from the problem with poplars. That is like a canonical continuity thing. The little uh, the little yeah. the little one that that stopped Leela from getting eaten. This right. is this is him. Um and then it also it, this one has these weird sort of like spiritual connections to the original run because there's that and there's also Lur being obsessed with the TV. Uh right? right? Yeah, right. and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and Earth that's TV. the thing from when aliens attack. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even because okay, when the kids started talking, right? Like I was like, who the fuck is playing this kid? Because this is like a this just sounds like a kid, and I was like, oh, this is Lauren Tom. Lauren Tom was the kid in that one too, so that, that actually makes sense. Oh, that's true, and doing a very different voice, much higher for the yeah, other yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, that's, yeah. that's interesting. Wow. Um, yeah, that's great. Uh. Mm. Okay, when they're going to invade, <laughs> the joke that killed me when they're invading DC is when he's looking at what to shoot and what to destroy, and he's, the Jefferson Memorial. <laughs> All right, that's my first. That's my first note. The Jefferson's Memorial. It is so funny. I love that. So funny. It's it. such a good it. joke. <laughs> um, but it's funny that he just panics and kills Agnew again. And so that's now like a runner <laughs> that yeah, Agnew just keeps yeah. getting killed. And this is where they like the only time I think they address it outside of calling him a clone is he goes, that's my second to last Agnew. So it means <laughs> he can die one more. Right. Wait, no, that's the last time. 
So that means if he dies one more time, it's no more. There's right. No more. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right. Um, yeah, good stuff. Um yeah, there's some cool visuals in like when they're when they're on the planet picking those plants, like the bioluminescent stuff looks pretty cool. Mm-hmm. I like yeah. I liked how that stuff looked. Oh, the uh, uh, speaking of speaking of when they're doing the doing the plant thing, this is the I, I I only really like it because it's the first one of these like they didn't do it even I don't even think they did it last last year, but like uh, they did a, they do a Hermes weed thing during that, oh yeah where he, where he says uh everybody f- start filling up these dime bags <laughs> he just kind of has <laughs> dime bags on on tap I'm like, okay yeah y'all, y'all waited long uh, enough to where this is funny now <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one dime bags dime yeah. bags is also a funny funny word um <laughs> little dime bag. uh I also like that he starts yelling 5-0, 5-0 when the lights <laughs> that's come through. That's good shit. Yeah, that's good five shit. 5-0 Macronians. <laughs> that's good shit. Um, yeah, it's interesting. Um, the overall premise of this episode, though, I, I like the idea of subverting E.T., just being like, oh, what if the human mm-hmm. was the E.T.? <laughs> what if human right, the human right. was the one that the alien was keeping a secret on their planet? Uh and there's some like I like I think there's some fun I think there's some nice sweet scenes between Fry and Jur. Mm, um, sure. Yeah, there's some good stuff. Mm. Um, I wrote a yeah. I, I wrote feces pieces because uh, because uh, <laughs> he keeps eating the uh, uh, the the because that's the, that's the ET thing is like the he yes, picks up the, the Reese's re- pieces and shit. But like he's like, oh, those that's like my those, those are like are my, my turds, turds, bro. Like, yeah. uh, <laughs> and then throughout the episode, Fry's like, I just have some more turds. I'm hungry. Like, <laughs> he, he just wants the turds so bad. Yeah, for sure. I wish I know. <laughs> I like that that the feces pieces jokes and joke annoys me because feces doesn't quite rhyme with Reese's. <laughs> it's so right. close to <laughs> like I get it, and I don't know how you fix it. Other than saying like feces, pieces or something like feces, I don't know, because <laughs> that's literally that's almost what I said when I was trying to say it just now. Right, like, I, like it well, was also, coming like, out. Some people say like Reese's pieces, even though that's not <laughs> what it is. It's Reese's, Reese's pieces. pieces. Oh well. Um, did you it's notice that? Uh, did you? Yeah. Did you notice <laughs> that Jur has bl- has Blinky? Has <laughs> Blinky the fish? Yeah. From <laughs> you know what? I didn't write that down, but when you said it, I remembered it. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah he does. He does. He does. Um, I like. I like. Uh, <laughs> I like. Well, first of all, I like Fry saying, uh, "This is a uh, TT uh, text home." And he's like, no, yeah. nah, I don't think you can do that because of the embargo. He's like, oh, TT Facebook home. <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but also, like, when they figure out what to do and he just, like, writes SOS and then Bender sees it. He's like, SOS, those are the letters that Fry knows. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> <It's funny. laughs> that is a good joke. That's a really yeah. good joke. Um, I like that this is sort of this is like there's other aspects that kind of make this a weird spiritual successor to the problem with Poplars. Like, there's. They have Fry in a cage, being wait like waiting to be killed by an Omicronian. Like they're trying to kill him, just like in Problem with Poplars, Leela being in the cage, and they're gonna have uh, they're gonna have Lur eat her or whatever. So right, there's right, like right. I, I I never really put that together until this time. It's like oh yeah, there are like multiple connections to the problem with Poplars here. Mm. Um. Yeah, it's I like this one. I, I think this one's pretty good. It's it's got some jokes I like. I laugh at this one quite a bit. And uh and I like I just generally like that subversion of the ET idea where they're just like, oh fries the fries the the alien being kept by a real alien, you know? Yeah. Right, right. Yeah, like I <clears throat> I, I like this one. I definitely like that. It. It's like probably on the end of like ones that like I feel like when I think of the grand scheme of Futurama, I'll probably forget about it. But like, yeah, you know, it still would if I if like it was on, it would make me laugh for sure. Yeah, so, for sure. Yeah. Um, all right, should we uh, mosey should on we down? Move, move on down. Fry and Leela's big fling. Let's do it. Let's do it. Um, I love the first act of this episode a lot. I like that the whole premise is just Fry and Leela trying to have a nice date and some alone time. Um. And that's great. I love that shit. Like, mm-hmm. I feel like the way this episode starts is exactly how they should have been approaching Fry and Leela 
in this run where it's just they are together create god these fucking construction out my window can you hear it at all <laughs> yeah i heard that one i heard that god damn it i hate my life has been ruined by this this construction <laughs> um <laughs> um but uh what was i saying fuck oh i like i was saying that i think that in this run of futurama they should have just always had the Fry and Leela dilemmas be issues within their relationship. Like now they're together. So what kind of, what kind of dilemmas are caused by them actually fully dating and being in a relationship? And this is a great example of something like that. Mm. Fry and Leela trying to have a nice date. They don't ever get any alone time together and they're struggling to find that alone time. Great well, idea. My, my thing, I, I feel like you might actually be about to talk about it. Uh, Go for it. But like, um, when they actually do go on a vacation, yeah, L- Leela says that she doesn't know how to describe her and Fry's relationship. Yep, hate it. And, and I was like, and I think I, I wrote, "Give me a fucking break." I know, dude. <laughs> it's, it's the end of the cartoon. That's <laughs> so the thing. Over. Is like, I like this episode's premise and first act, and that aspect of like, I and I don't even mind the premise of an ex coming in and making things Mm -hmm. weird. I hate those little, those little beats. Um, And at the same time, I also am like, uh, first of all, yeah, Leela saying that inexcusable piece of dialogue. I hate that they did that. Um, Leela saying, Hey, do you care if I go catch up with Sean? Uh, and then Fry being like just passive aggressive about it. I'm like, well, yeah, Fry, you need to fucking say if this upsets you, <laughs> like, mm. you know, <laughs> like tell her if this upsets you. Um, but but I do think, a- I, but that I, that's the that I think that Fry thing is just something that makes sense for Fry though, and like the yeah, the maybe. reason the Leela line like annoyed me is just because it was like this is not what you said <laughs> this is not what you've I been know. like telling us that how they feel about uh, it's it's, one ex- another it's exactly the writers trying to have their cake and eat it too with this relationship where they're so mm. used to this dynamic where it's like fry leela jerking fry around but now you've gone so deep into it the whole premise of this episode is them trying to have a great lovely date together and they've been like so in love this whole first act uh right. and now you're just gonna throw it away for some like cheap cheap wishy-washy bullshit you know it's like uh, if, I, I it's like that. if in the middle it's like if in the middle of pixelated and afraid already zip showed up and then right. like everything i fucked up like you right. know what i mean like it's yeah i don't know it but is even funny that, that, that were... stuff is like it's like seven minutes long like five to seven minutes it's not even that long it's not even a mainstay too which is like it's right. kind of like a detour almost um, i know and like i don't know like yeah there's just um it's just frustrating to me. I I do kind of like that they finally revealed Sean. Like, Sean was a character that they mentioned in previous episodes. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't know. It's just like, this. that's the exact kind of shit that bothers me. I, you know, I think they bring it back around. The last act, they're like, they're together and they're sweet. I like they're like, they're sweet together. And I also kind of like the twist that they're just like sitting there hating on everyone. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And that just makes the, the whole twist of the things combining where it's like, Oh, the primate planet is it's they're in the zoo on the primate planet or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's kind of a sweaty way to combine it, but it's, pretty funny and i liked um, it i liked it i didn't yeah i didn't see the shit coming like when they when, sure, they, when the, the the reveal when they pull it out i was like whoa like i yeah. legitimately did not like see that I, I, I was amazed that i was able to be shocked <laughs> it's also funny that they so they do this plan of the primates thing and then they're like oh yeah let's bring back the two talking monkeys we've had in the whole <laughs> run of the show we haven't seen gunter since season since season one yeah no, when, seen I him saw him again, when i saw him again i was yeah. like oh shit <laughs> yeah and then dr banjo is from the um the evolution episode last mm. in like the last 26 episodes with uh where it's like the robot of they they end up proving proving evolution it's like the evolution versus creationism one with the right, uh, right, right. with the robots who evolve or whatever um and it's funny to see them again uh, yeah it's, i think that's funny and then i love but i love the joke when they're sitting there and they're like <laughs> they're like talking shit about everybody 
And Fry just goes, you know who I hate the most? That monkey, monkey we haven't seen in years. Gunter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I like that joke a lot. Um, did you notice that when they're running through the zoo, they're like selling Fry hair that you could like. Yeah, I saw on. that. I like that. A little Mickey Mouse shit. Yeah, yeah exactly. Um, I also thought it was funny that uh, there was a few references to previous uh, episodes in the zoo. They've got the bone vampires from Fry and the Eggman. They that like that little that creature that Fry like uh, that Fry raised that ended up sucking bones out of people. They've got right. those in there. They've got the Cyclops from the first episode back in that the one the big Cyclops monster that only eats Cyclopses or whatever. Oh right. right, um, right. And then actually a funny one is funny because I just watched a video about these. They did. Um, there's a there's an exhibit for a thylacine. Thylacine is a is, is a Tasmanian tiger, which are extinct. Um, but they're a really interesting animal because they've only went extinct in the like sometime between like the 20s and 50s. Uh, and they own, pretty much only lived on ta- in Tasmania. Obviously, Taz, the Tasmanian tiger, Taz in, is like kind of based on him. He doesn't look anything like them. But mm-hmm. um there's actually like video footage of them. They're like these cool, like they're like kind of these fox tigery looking creatures. And there's real footage of them and real pictures of them that exist. And they just are completely extinct now. Uh, it's oh, kind of wild. Um, but it was kind of, I thought that was kind of funny that they had those in the, uh, in the exhibit. And they brought them back. Um, yeah. It's, uh, yeah. Like, so this, this is an episode that I'm like, oh, it's like. It's just like that middle act stuff brings it down, sure. yeah. even though I really like almost everything else about it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like I, I yeah. do. I like I like the top and the bottom. But you know what it is, though, is like when that when the Sean stuff was like bothering me a little bit, like I still like liked the like Amy Bender Zoyberg shit. Like I still liked that. Um, yes. So I was cool, like because when they cut back to it, it's like, well, OK, I mean, they, they kind of do something that annoys me over here. But like. I'm still into the episode because of um, these other characters, right? Um, but yeah, like I, 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 get, I, I definitely, I, I get it. I'm in agreement there. Um, there's a there's a joke that uh, that that made me and my roommate laugh a lot uh, when they when when Fry and Leela are at Fry's apartment. He starts the uh, he starts that Leela Leela starts playing the record and it starts playing just the two of us by Bill Weathers and, and uh, and, uh <laughs> then Fry says finally just the two of us and then Leela says yeah I knew it was on one of these albums I thought that was funny <laughs> you think they're talking about <laughs> themselves and the last beat uh you were in a zoo like Bender like pointing at him and shit like <laughs> yeah. after the after you see the executive producer credits and shit I thought that was great <laughs> that's good shit pretty funny episode yeah it's just i just like i think this episode would be really high up for me if it weren't for those annoying things they do in that second act you know Mm -hmm. Um, i get it frustrating all right let's move on to the inhuman torch um i've always liked this episode even though the third act is bananas um (laughs) (laughs) uh i like i like first of all a lot of stuff from old episodes in this. There, he's using the thing longer. He go is to the using the thing ba- longer. Yeah, they, they go to the <laughs> sub basement and he points down at it with the thing mm-hmm. longer. There's mm-hmm. lots of stuff from old ones. Um, I love the visual of the helium mine. Like a mine going into a star is crazy. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, and then I think it's funny that since it's the helium mine, they all they all have high voices. I thought that joke was really funny. <laughs> That's pretty good. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty good. So I got. Um, a- I got, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta let you know right off the bat. Uh, there's a line in here where Fry says, uh, "When the, the, the after they become, I think, I think it's after they become a fire station, uh, an alarm is going off, and then Fry says, "What happened? Did they get a new pope?" Now, <sighs> after he said that, because uh, the full disclosure, a couple days before that, I had been watching your friend's video on the popes. Oh shit! But, Shout out to Katie. Everyone right. go watch Skatey Skatey's video about the, the Pope's great about the video. Popes. <laughs> great, great video. I hadn't I hadn't finished it, but I but at the time I remember what I got from it was like I didn't I don't know why I never thought that like 
popes were murdered. And I was watching it. I was watching this episode with my roommate. And then I like, I like paused it. I was like, wait a minute. Like, you know what I, you know what I found out the other day? And I was explaining to him what happened in her video, but I was like, I never finished it. And then we went, we stopped the episode, went and watched the video looked up other Pope shit, called his girlfriend, <laughs> who is a history major in college and grad school. <laughs> long story less long, I didn't come back to this episode for five hours. Uh, and it was it was all because of that stupid ass Pope line. <laughs> it Dude, just sent so me down. Funny. It just sent that's me down. So funny. I that love video that, that video is jokes. It is so funny. And I I was trying to tell Ed, I was like, I don't know what the fuck she is going to do next because this is the first and only video she has. I don't know what this content <laughs> is going to be. <laughs> I don't know what I this content gonna be, is going to be. I think I it's going to be similar, like weird edutainment rabbit holes like that, where it's uh, like, yeah. oh, well, let's go down okay. weird historical rabbit holes and make it funny and like do this cool little anim- these animations with it. I uh, yeah, it. I hi- highly recommend y'all check that out. You probably know her from Twitter, and she used to be on. She used to be huge on TikTok as Skatey420. Um, but she's a friend of mine. She's super funny. She's also a huge Futurama fan. We've been texting about our anticipation for the new season. So good. The very funny that you <laughs> were thinking about her video. It's, it's watching all because of that dumbass line. <laughs> <laughs> it's all because that line. I just I had oh, to. Oh great. man. So funny. Uh, we will. We probably have her on the pod in the future. Um, yeah, and mm. uh, yeah, go check that video out. That's super funny. Cool um, okay, I guess we should get back to this episode. <laughs> right. It's all t- uh, uh, tangentially related. Right. Okay. So here's a joke I love. After they all get, after Bender gets awarded or the team gets awarded for saving everyone, uh, Mayor Poopenmeyer says, "You've got hero in your blood and heroin in your veins." <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good joke. I like that. I do. Um, like that. I also love. Uh, the professor saying, good news, everyone. Someone's home is on fire. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Yeah. I also just like that they just were like, we're a fire department now. <laughs> like, right. we're, not, we're not even going to, don't even question this. Uh, um, there was like a, it's like a sneaky line um, that like the first, because again, five hour break before i watched this one so like i like had i like restarted it so i caught it on my second watch when he said uh they were they were going over all the fires and then somebody said that uh robot hell had a fire and i was like wait a minute what (laughs) there's a fire in robot hell (laughs) yeah they show it they show it they uh but it's it's hell Right. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, who cares? But they. But they do. But that. But that joke is really funny because it's. It's him. It's the robot devil being scared of a tiny trash fire in his yeah, office yeah, yeah. when he's like literally in robot hell. It's pretty good. Yeah. But that is great. Robot hell had a fire. Um. When I saw I really the, uh, like the. Yeah. I was when I when I saw the flame, the little the little personified flame. I wrote down how's moving castle. How's moving castle. I had a feeling. Yeah. 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 Calcifer, great character. Um, great character played by Billy Crystal in the dubs. Um, and oh, yeah, yeah I, I think I always think of Calcifer when I watch this episode, even though he's blue in this one. Um, it's of it's interesting. Like the third act goes. That is such a far off, like such a wild direction to go in mm-hmm. with this episode. Uh, but it's fun because I like I like the idea that Bender is forced to to do something truly selfless without being recognized in order to save people. Like this whole episode is about him, him saving people, but, but doing it primarily because he gets the recognition and he gets to be the hero. And so he's forced to then truly save, you know, truly save everyone without, without them even recognizing that. Mm. Um, And I think that's, I think that's why it works for me, even though the like fire people are weird. (laughs) It's a weird move. Lord. Um, but there's some funny jokes and the more callbacks like Bender jumps in to grab the flame in the lava and you know why he can do that you know why he can go in that lava because he's 40% dolomite baby it's he's 40% <laughs> dolomite <laughs> um, 
I also love it's I I think it's really funny when the fire people tell him that he's Earth's greatest hero or whatever and he goes, Suck it, Gilgamesh. <laughs> 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 I think that's a great joke. Um yeah. yeah. I like this it, episode. I like I think it's a good one. <laughs> yeah. I think it's cool. I think it's cool. It's I think it I think it might be uh like you were talking about like where it goes like at the end, like the third act. That's where it like lost me. Like I was like, right. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, all right. But like even then I don't think this is like a bad one at all. Like even sure. though it's like lower for me. Like I don't think it's like bad. Yeah, think. it it like it's loses fine. me a bit, even though I still think they do really good stuff with it. I'm just like, oh, this is just so far off the rails compared mm-hmm. to what it was before. But also like you still got some cool ideas and like cool uh you're doing some good stuff with, with Bender's story in this. I think the uh I think the peak of the and it's gonna it's gonna sound like like fucked up because it's so early but i really 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 like all the 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 like the minor stuff like the like yeah. uh i like i like that shit a lot like i like them I do too. going there and i like like how how bender saves them i like that shit like i like all of that shit like i think all of that shit is really cool um yeah so you know like that, those are, that's that's like the highlight of the episode for me and then everything after that i just kind of think is like cool Right, um, but you know, it's still, it's still, it's all right, it's all right. It's not bad for sure. It's a solid one. Um, all right, let's move on to this anthology one. I'm really curious mm-hmm. how you feel about this one. Um, Saturday morning fun pit. So this is yeah. the uh, this is the one that is parodying Saturday morning cartoons, mm-hmm. uh, namely uh, Scooby Doo, uh, the Smurfs, or like mm-hmm. Strawberry Shortcake Smurfs ish yeah. thing, and uh, GI Joe are basically the three par- parodies. All right. Um, I like that this is framed around something real in the Futurama it world. Is. It's just Nixon watching TV. You know, it doesn't really make sense that they all look like the Futurama characters in the cartoons, but it, like I, yeah. that just goes a long way for me is them framing it around something mm-hmm. that's actually happening. Right. <laughs> um, I get you. Yeah. Like why aren't, why weren't, why wasn't anyone watching those nature documentaries from Naturama? You know, yeah, that would be easy. Um, this was nominated for a WGA award, weirdly. Um, oh. Yeah, Patrick Ver- Pat was written, but here's, you know, I will say, written by Patrick oh, Verone, previously president of the WGA. So. Oh, <laughs> shit. <laughs> oh, shit. We love shit. you, Patrick. You're a great writer. <laughs> Patrick wrote the. Uh, Come he's, on, he's got, man. He's, he's got the script for the. Um, he's got the script for the first. Uh, episode of the new season upcoming the impossible mm. stream so we'll get some new patrick verone stuff in a couple days actually it probably is out it's out <laughs> if you're listening to this it's yeah, out right <laughs> looks like you about to get another award yeah mm. um what do you think about this episode i want to hear what you think just you being you know yeah a cartoon guy being more familiar with these things that's parodying probably and uh, right, right yeah 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 so i think that the first bit the scooby-doo stuff is the most accurate parody of Scooby Doo I have ever seen in my entire fucking life. Hell that yeah. shit is perfect. They right. got the they they're like moving the ship around in this like nasty reused cell that has like dust on it and shit, and like you can <laughs> see the dust move. It's so <laughs> there's like there's parts where there's like a shot of like the Futurama characters and the Harlem Globetrotters like laughing like they would always do in like filmation cartoons and Hannah Barbera cartoons there'd just be like a stock like stock animation of the characters laughing that they would just like use uh uh all the time I love that in that exact same shot one of the Globetrotters arm keeps disappearing because shit like that <laughs> used to happen all the time <laughs> it's and it's like you th- I, I just kept watching it and I kept going like all right when are they gonna like give up on the bit and they never do the animation is still stilted the entire time they're doing the same poses uh there's like there's parts where they're like not looking at each other while they talk that's like just like scooby-doo there's parts where like like uh, like amy amy's velma there's parts where like she'll like exclaim and be like jinkies like but like where she should be really animated, she's just like jinkies, like nah, she's like yeah. still like like standing stoic. It's the best. 
Billy West plays Shaggy in one of the Scooby Doo movies, and now right. he is playing Fry doing Fry a Shaggy imitation. Shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> that man is a treasure. <laughs> the designs are perfect. I I think this might be the most notes I've written <laughs> the I entire time we've done the plot. I love that's that. That's how many. That's how much shit I had to say about that Scooby Doo thing. Yeah. Saying all that to say. The Smurf shit left let me to fuck down ASAP. Yeah. I was not. I didn't give a fuck at all. It wasn't yep. the only thing I That's... thought was funny was uh was Gargamel the professor, uh, right? N- not doing anything like he's just kind of watching. Like I'm gonna get those guys. <laughs> and then he just doesn't move. I like that. I think that's yeah, funny. that's right. That's right. I uh, I feel exactly the same way. Is where I every time I watch this one, I'm like I'm I'm pretty much all in on the on the Scooby D one and especially like the crossovers there where like they bring in the Harlem Globetrotters who mm-hmm. have been in both Futurama and Scooby and it's so <laughs> fucking it's good they got it's George perfect. Decay they got George yep. Decay there and then and then they 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 got that Larry Bird voicemail Larry Bird. where he just yeah. says like hey they put a cartoon script on my desk I'm not doing that shit I'm not doing it <laughs> and, and, I and it's actually Larry Bird it's too fucking Larry Bird it's so yeah. funny it's so funny um, it's good but, I love but it. I'm in the same boat like the second one always loses me I always get bored mm-hmm. watching the second one and it's almost like it bring it brings it down so much that I'm I just like can't even. I need to watch the last one isolated sometime because like I by, get you. I, all the time, every time I get to it, I'm just like, I don't care. I don't want to watch it's, anymore. It, it, cause, this. Honest, yeah. Cause it took me, it took me it's cause it, it, the, the last one did get me. It did like drag me in and I was in, but it's it had, it, because of, because of that one, because of the second one, it like took a minute. Like, right. I feel like if, why did they go there? Like, I just feel like, there is so many other like Saturday morning cartoons that they could have, they could have did like the, they could have did like the Archies. They could have did like Alvin and the Chipmunks. They could have made them a band. They could have did Alvin and the Chipmunks. There's so many like right. other, like oh, they could have, they could have did Fat Albert I mean, and like Fry, put them Fry, in a junkyard. Like, Fry being Alvin, like just even just them, them having, I mean, you, I can see his, I can see his chipmunk design now. You yeah. Know? yeah. <laughs> like, I can see the Fryified chipmunk design. Like they could do, um, they could do that. They could do, um, yeah, like they could do Fat Albert, put him in the junkyard. There's so many other. They could even did like some He Man shit, bro. Like there's so many other like Saturday morning cartoons to choose from, and they just kind of, and they just kind of choose like. But I, but again, because they have those wraparounds in story, I guess it makes sense, right? Because they're like, uh, I don't know, like what what was the issue that they the cartoons weren't teaching like values or something like that, and um, right, therefore. Nixon was like, all right, I'm going to put this shit on. Like, maybe this. Right, like- right. So that is parodying that real world. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that real world so uh, aspect, which I, I forgot about. Um, yeah. You know, I and like part of me also then kind of understands why this got nominated for a WGA award because uh, it is like an episode about the history of cartoons in a way, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh Yeah. I don't know. I've always, I probably rate it, put this too low in my overall full series ranking. I think I put it pretty low and I remember being pretty, people being pretty mad about it. Um, mm. But I probably should have, it probably deserved more at least just for the, the Scooby-Doo one alone. That Scooby-Doo, shit is like, that's like one of perfect. the best, it's one of the best segments of any of the anthology episodes of mm-hmm. this whole show. It's really high up there. Yeah. It's perfect. It's like, it's, yeah, it's like super well done. They commit to it again, and and you know, it's always great to see the Globe Trotters. Those are great Futurama characters. Like, they're always great. Um, I love when uh, Bubblegum sees um, Fred Hermes, and he's like, "What you doing with an ascot, brother?" And yeah. I love that. That's like top twenty Futurama lines for me now. That shit is hilarious. Yeah. <laughs> what you doing wearing an ass guy? I love that. <laughs> That's good shit. And then um uh, and then what? Like what is G I G I Zap? Uh yeah. That shit is hard. It's not it's not it's not as hard as the Scooby Doo shit, but I think that shit is hard. Sure. I like the you liked I it? like that there. I need to yeah. watch it. I need to watch it separated because I like I every time I get to it, I'm just like <laughs> I'm just like over over the episode by yeah. the time I get there. Yeah. I think isolated too, it it'll probably even be better for me because like they do all that 
stuff. And that, like when I was watching, it, I was like, I know this is funny, but I'm like, I'm still kind of bummed out from the last one. But they were doing right. all that stuff about like the uh, <laughs> Nixon is dubbing the cartoon. It's it's funny. Like that shit is yeah. funny. Like he like. He's like uh, putting like different words in everybody's mouths, but when Leela says "you bastards," he says he still says "bastards." He's like, "Wow, I, I can say shit." <laughs> like it's funny, it's cool when I say it. So whatever, <laughs> right, right? I like that shit. The PSA, uh, there's a PSA at the end. Right. What is it again? It's uh, God, I'm always it's, just like it's, always so over this episode. But it's the it's the white it's the white and Hubert and Nixon. I don't remember what the point of it is. I just know that at the end of it, instead of uh, the more, you know, he says, now, you know, something. And that made me laugh. Yeah. Sorry. I just got distracted for a moment by my construction. outside. <laughs> 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 I'm also very tired. I was up all night writing a video. <laughs> um, okay. Good shit. This is yeah, like, I think I, I think I've come around more on this episode <clears throat> than I, I used to really dislike this one, but the Scooby-Doo shit is so good. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, all right. Oh man, I love it. Let's move on to Calculon 2.0. Yeah. Um uh so I I like this episode. I like that they follow up mm-hmm. Calculon dying. Um and uh and I like I like the idea that they kept making all my circuits without Calculon. They just replaced him with this very chill guy who's not yeah. dramatic. <laughs> right, I like that right, stuff right. a lot. Um, and I think my favorite aspect of this episode is that Farnsworth's plan to resurrect Calculon is just like a fully <laughs> satanic ritual. And he's just like, it it's so science. <laughs> it's, it's so, so good. funny. I love that shit. is hilarious. I love that shit a lot. I also love that when they go down and show Calculon and robot hell, he's just like the robot devil fucking hates him. <laughs> he's so fed up with him. He's so annoyed by him. Mm-hmm. Calculon's just going around monologuing the whole time. The robot devil's like, shut up. <laughs> oh my <laughs> God. Um, did you laugh at the callback when Calculon resurrects to uh, Randy <laughs> going, Calculon's back. <laughs> which is yeah, yeah, yeah. A call back to uh call back to I roommate, which I think introduced Calculon um with uh, yeah, when they're watching the show. Because <laughs> they're watching all my circuits and they're like giving his eulogy. It's, it's at his yeah, funeral. Yeah. <laughs> and and then the Calculon steps in and goes, Mind if I give the eulogy? <laughs> <laughs> Man, so funny. What I what I found really interesting about this, who plays Calculon? Who is that? Is uh, I'm that pretty sure it's Maurice LaMarche. Oh, is that oh it's Maurice? Yeah. Uh, that, would, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I am so fascinated by the like reserved Calculon performance. Yeah. Like the like not dramatic like his like normal tone voice i am so fascinated by that shit totally like that like really like it seems like kind of like an arbitrary thing but it like really elevates the episode for me um just kind of like watching him do that and like i love fry and bender being like fanboys the entire time they're just kind of like man our show sucks. What fuck we supposed to do? Talk to each other? I don't want to do that. Like we got, we got to figure this thing out and like make the show worthwhile. Uh, I love all that. And like, you know, I mean, Calculon is definitely like, like an airhead. He's full of himself. He's been full of himself the entire run of the show, right? But he was never like, like a super shitty guy. Like he's not like Zap or anything like that, right? But right. still, seeing Leela lay into his ass like like like, before you even know like why she's doing it because at first i was like whoa like geez (laughs) (laughs) um but even that that it's so rough to watch but i still i I still like like that scene too yeah like i I like i like this one a lot i really like this episode this one i think this i've always really liked this episode a because i just like i like when they are are cool with following up major story events in some way, you know, like, and so Mm -hmm. I like that aspect. I also just think this is a very funny episode and like Mm -hmm. Calculon is just such a funny character. Um, I, I love in how his, how his one man show ends. It's supposed to be his big comeback as one man show. And it ends with him going, 
If I had to do it all again, I'd murder those astronauts all the same. <laughs> wouldn't, wouldn't you? <laughs> That's so funny. It's so, I'll, so oh funny. My, you know, <laughs> when I was, I was watching it with my roommate, when that part happened, I turned to him and said, like, I feel like in the context of whatever that long ass one man show is, he bodied that. Like that's that might right. be like the perfect, most perfect <laughs> bookend. <laughs> like it's probably crazy. Like in that mm. context, <laughs> man. Um, and I also just like his, like, uh, I think his final speech, like the final speech that wins everyone over before great. he reveals that he's, it's really good. It's really fucking good. Great. And, great. and I like, that's just great. Maurice LaMarche performance. It's man. such that, a good Maurice. He, is, he truly really is good. such a, such a great, great voice actor. Uh, mm-hmm. obviously just like a legend. He's done so many characters, but, um, that performance is so great. And it's also interesting how. That, but I mean, obviously he's an acting bot. So like you want both of the episodes to be that way. But the Thief of Baghead also ends with a very dramatic Calculon performance that he then dies <laughs> performing. Right, right, right. Um, and then this one, you know, he takes a bow and he accidentally pulls a light down and kills himself again. Mm-hmm. Death number two. Um, and as we talked yeah. about it in the last episode, but he appears to be alive in the new season. Yeah, that boy back. Um Allegedly. I mean, there's a few sequences where we see him in the trailer, but one of them is clearly in All My Circuits, so you could uh, imagine it's maybe a scene from All My Circuits, but the other one is showing him, like, shoot up through the floor on the set of All My Circuits. Right, I really right, still, right. like, my my guess since that f- scene first showed in the teaser has always been that that is him emerging from hell. Literally him <laughs> coming up from yeah, hell, yeah, yeah. coming back to be in the show. Um, Yeah. Uh, I li- I like really 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 like this episode. I think this is such a good episode. Yeah. I do too, dude. Uh, yeah, that Hell this yeah. one's great. <laughs> yeah, man. This I do like in general. I think this last run just is pretty pretty strong. You know, there's not mm-hmm. there's there's some stinkers in here. I'd say, but it's mostly pretty strong. This this next yeah. one. Let's move on to Assy comes home. Uh, this episode does not is one that does not work for me personally. Um, it feels like this is the episode that they're trying to kind of give their, like, this is like the Bender farewell episode, you know, like, uh, like they know they're in their last stretch. Like the, uh, okay. I, it, well, I mean, think about his whole fucking catchphrase is bite my shiny metal ass. So the yeah. whole thing is him losing his ass. And I just think it like, huh. it doesn't really work on that level. Um, like, I mean, think about how in the sequence at the end, when he's really he's sad and they just try so hard to go like so emotional about with him being sad about losing his ass. And I'm like, man, this is like this is a joke about a butt. This has always just been a silly catchphrase. Like, mm-hmm. I don't think this is going to work. <laughs> I don't think this this attempt at over going overtly emotional is going to work. Um What did you think about the opening with the with the gangs who wear nearly identical shirts? Uh it, it it's such a Futurama thing to do to like make this as like convoluted as fucking possible. <laughs> I thought I thought th- I thought that shit was funny, and then when they and then when they got there, and then you find out why they were buying all of those fucking. <laughs> I, I, okay, well, first of all, I've been. <laughs> Uh, full disclosure, I've been calling guns blowers lately. So, excuse me. Uh, so, when you find out why they were buying all those blowers, it's just so they could <laughs> so they could bring peace. <laughs> to, they, so, they can tie flags. <laughs> I do, I do and, like that. Oh, man. Oh, this is when I was talking about how there's all those fucking hip hop references that I could have used. What does Fry say? When they find out that they took the wrong turn, he says, you think we walked straight out of Blipton? Come on. <laughs> right. Shut right. the fuck up. <laughs> right. Man, how, how about uh, what do you how do you feel about Le- Leela using her like <laughs> her, like straight speak in that sequence? <laughs> it's just funny. <laughs> it's funny is uh, we could get 
If, I would love to live in a world where we could get uh, more line reads like Yo Holmes and shit. Yo like Holmes, that. dude, so. that's the best one. That's, <laughs> that's always the best, the best one. one. Yo Holmes, <laughs> Yo we're Holmes. looking for a microwave oven. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. It's great. <laughs> um, okay, so one thing I do like about this episode is once mm-hmm. Bender gets bot jacked and his whole body gets jacked, they visit all of these classic locations and characters from the whole that history of true. the show. I really like that. So. First, they go and find the guy who we just saw in, in Six Million Dollar Mon, who, yep. is, who is doing all the stuff for, for Hermes. But we first did, he were first introduced to him in, uh, God. It's is it the, Spanish Fry? It's, no, it's not in Spanish Fry. It's earlier. I don't remember what Whoa. episode it is, but I, oh, you know what? It, it's, um, I think it's My Three Sons um, in season one when Damn. they're, when they're walking they're walking to do a delivery and Fry gets distracted by him and the guy tries to sell him gills. Uh, and mm. he's like, you want it? You want gills? He's like, well, then you don't need your lugs anymore. And he goes, can't see why I would. And he's just like, he's about to give the guy his lungs. Basically. That's this what is, he's introduced. This is the, this is the guy from Spanish fry though, right? Is he, in, is, this the, is he the, the guy, guy from Spanish? The, the, you know what? The guy from Spanish fry is the next guy who uh because this first guy is the one who's doing that stuff the next guy who they go to his store and he's selling them like he's got bender's antenna because it's supposed to be his dick because it's like the oh, aphrodisiac that's human the, horn yeah stuff. you're right that's, that's, the, that's the guy from spanish fry you're right yes okay okay uh and then that sends them to hedonism bot it's cool to see like hit hedonism bots house <clears throat> they go to the robot frat house for mars university mm-hmm. uh to get bender's body which is now a keg um you see the borax kid one of the few recurring characters from these Comedy Central run, this Comedy Central run. I love the design of the like, I like the, I love a riverboat casino. And so like the riverboat casino spaceship. Cool. Like it. I'm mm. in. <laughs> I like that yeah, shit. Yeah, yeah. That's the, uh, this is the, this is a, this is the same part where we see uh, Fry walking around with Bender in like a baby carrier. Uh, that's a funny visual. That's I like right. that a lot. That's right. <laughs> For sure. Um, and then, and then, like when they do get to having to go find his ass in like the shipwreck or whatever, visually, like the fog and the wreck, all of that stuff, I think is cool looking. Like I really like the look of that sequence. Mm. Um, the way the like head floats out of the spit shipwreck is cool. Like there's some cool looking stuff, but I just like I just they try so hard to get you to emotionally connect to. Fry to Bender's loss of his ass, and I just think it's a fool's errand. <laughs> I don't think I can. It never, it never works for me. I guess um, you. this, yeah, this is just another one that has small elements. I, I like small elements. I really appreciate. Uh, and but overall, it's just like a story that doesn't fully work for me. Um, yeah, how do you feel about this one? Uh, so I just kind of was like taking it in as like a. Like, a, you know, like regular, right, I guess we're looking for his ass. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> sure. I didn't like in, in the context of like you saying that uh, personifying it as like Bender's like farewell, that kind of like changes that a little for me. Yeah. I didn't even because I didn't even like. Hmm, I guess I didn't like watch these thinking like, oh, OK, they're giving each person an episode to kind of like you know, like salute them off. I didn't think about it like that until I got the Zoiberg, but by then it was like too late. Uh right. For me to for me to consider these. And now that I think about it, I guess the next one is Leela's. Um Yeah, in a way. Leela, you know, meanwhile is also Leela's. Like that's the thing. Right. Is like this one is kind of the Leela centric episode to wrap up mm-hmm. things. But and you know, it has to do with her mutant origins and all that <laughs> stuff. So like that's that's cool. But but you know, I always just cons- like Fry and Leela meanwhile fry and Leela's goodbyes you know that's but also yeah. you know game of tones is a another fry one you know it's so like right. yeah they really do they really do do that kind of that kind of thing yeah, where it's just like yeah. the farewell to or everyone gets an episode on the way out yeah so like as a as an ep- as an episode on his own i thought i thought it was just like all right like you know it made me laugh um i, I, I liked it i liked it fine uh sure but i do think that like with the context that I guess this is like Bender's last episode. Right. Like, now nah, I think that does kind of make it like worse. I didn't think about yeah. it like that before. It, it does kind of make it worse. I feel. Yeah. Um, yep. I, uh, 
Yeah, it's 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 never been one of my favorites. I always found it a little boring. There's things, but like I said, things I like about it. It also feels like I mean, I know there's they're called it Assy Come Home, which is a which is Lassie Come Home par- title parody, and they literally do the thing where he saves the kid from the gravity well, which visually I think is cool. I like the I like the visual of the gravity well, but I don't know, like the kid just be like, "Thanks, Assy," and I'm like, "All right, we get it." Dude. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. All right, should we move on? Yeah. Cool. Leela's farewell episode. Leela and the Gene Stalk. Um, I have... This is another one I'm mixed on. I like things about this one. I like the idea. I like Leela's mutation going through new changes and like that being a thing later in her life. I think that's interesting. I like the like idea that she might have to move down to the sewer and be you mm. know like completely change her life and you know then be with her parents um the like the beanstalk stuff is a little that's f- wild fantasy you yeah, know i'm just like though. what yeah um there's some fun stuff and i was like why does mom have a sky castle like just go in space like yeah. you, like no, it, this doesn't make any sense. <laughs> yeah, make any sense. Is, yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I think yeah. My third note is this is kind of dumb. Yeah, because <laughs> it, it just I don't know. I feel like and also like once the the beanstalk stuff happens, I just feel like this is one of those. One, there's we talked about this before, but like the Comedy Central run is just really guilty of like having episodes that just kind of keep going. And right. like I think that happens here after like once the beanstalk stuff happens, it just like yeah. keeps going. There's something new. They got to go break somebody out and all this shit. Like it just keeps going. The bean Damn. the beanstalk growing is pretty. I like how it looks visually. Mm-hmm. Um, this is it's also interesting. The second episode in this run where they refer to the ship as Old Bessie. Uh, obviously, that's like mm-hmm. kind of a uh, kind of a play on the like it's the cow that they're selling for the beans thing, but it's funny that Farnsworth already referred to the ship as old Bessie and 2d blacktop. <laughs> and like Bessie is like such a cow name. <laughs> you right, know? Right, right. Um, it's just weird. It's kind of a funny thing. I wonder how, how <coughs> coordinated that was. Um, and you know, it's like hard for me to, it's hard for me to not care about a castle in the sky, man. Sky castles are cool. Okay. <laughs> Castle of the Sky is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> well, I, th- uh, I don't remember. I think it's Leela that calls it uh, some kind of deluxe apartment in the sky. Yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> right. That's right. That that's kind of funny. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it's, kind of, it's kind of funny. It's kind of funny. Um, there's, have a a, little... there, there's, a joke, there's a joke that like got a huge laugh out of me. Yeah, uh, when he <laughs> when <laughs> it's making me laugh thinking about it. When Fry <laughs> Fry turns to Bender and he sees, uh, he's like, "Don't oh, just like my cousin Van." And Bender's like, "I keep telling you, we didn't grow up together." <laughs> I also really like that joke. I really like that joke. I keep telling you, we didn't grow up together. It's so, <laughs> so funny. funny. I like that. Um, there's like a really random little Adam West and Burt Ward cameo who are Batman and yeah. Robin. And that's nice to see. You know, it's funny. I didn't, I guess I forgot that that was a thing. And also like Adam West died a few years ago and I guess I didn't really realize that he got a cameo in here before the show was over. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know, it's the genetics lab thing. So he's like, it's his head on an actual bat or whatever, which is funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's fine. Uh, and then this yeah. also gets the uh, and then it also gets the Adventure Time cameo. This has the the famous yeah. Adventure Time cameo. I will say, <laughs> was not fun to see that high. Not fun. <laughs> <laughs> that was not fun. <laughs> I always knew it existed. Never saw it in action. Never saw the episode. Right. And when it happened, it snuck up on me, and I was like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> it was not uh, fun. <laughs> so easy to like. I mean, it's it's it makes sense how easy it is to do. Obviously, with with John being the voice of Jake and Bender, probably mm. his two most famous characters. It's crazy how long those two shows ran. Is he? Do you think he's going to be Fiona and Cake? They got that say, Fiona and, and they, Cake. They both won't fucking die. I know. <laughs> he got two jobs. I, granted, I have not finished Adventure Time, even though I quite like it. But I've also, like, almost everyone I've talked to is likes all of the stuff they make. Like, even the last, even when they, like, ended mm. it. And then we're like, we're going to do Distant Lands. Everyone's like, yeah, those are really good, too. <laughs> and and now, right. like, everyone's pretty hyped on Fiona and Cake. And, and honestly... The vibes of the Fiona and Cake trailer, 
good. I think it looks cool. Yeah, it looks cool. <laughs> it does. It yeah. does. It's and I like I like that like they look like I guess she's like an adult. Uh right. Cuz that was always kind of my thing. Uh, well, the first time they did that, I was like, "This this kid is like, how old is this kid?" Finn, right. he was like, what, like thirteen at the time right. when they did that, and like, uh, she was like, probably my like Fiona was probably like my age, and I was like yeah. sixteen, I think, or something when they did that. Um, so I like that they like, it's very like she has like a job and shit like that. Like, I was like, oh, this yeah. is cool. Like I like I like I like that. Uh, speak the quick ten. Did you see like all the other because all the other shit was coming out. Uh, what else? Yesterday too, they they dropped the trailer for uh, that Young Love cartoon. That's based oh, I on did that watch short. that, dude. The um, uh, I love I love that it's in Chicago and the the Chicago backgrounds are really nice. That's like speaking to mm-hmm. my my Chicago heart. I was like, oh, what a beautifully what beautifully illustrated Chicago backgrounds. I love to see Word. that shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, you got you yeah, got to get in on I, that I, Chicago party on then. You know. <laughs> Still never watched that. <laughs> Get in on that goofy shit. I never checked it out. You know, uh, <laughs> it's not bad, <laughs> I yo. I don't know. Yeah. It's not bad. I, I've seen. I've seen a few. It's not bad. Yeah, I gotta check it out. I do have to give it a shot at some point. <clears throat> I mean, being a Chicago guy, I don't know. Uh, you know, it feels like I probably should have watched it. it. Feels like I probably should have watched it. <laughs> um, I uh, that that Young Love trailer. I was I remember watching it and thinking in the first half being like, oh, man, this is like a kid's kid show. And then they do the turn in the trailer. <laughs> you know what mm. I mean? Like in the the turn in the trailer where she's just like, all right, dad, fix my fucking hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, I, and I was like, oh, that's that's good. I like this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah this is it was great. one of yeah. those. It was one of those things I was watching. it. I was like, I don't know. Like I'll turn, I was asking my mom, like, who do you think this is like for? Like, like it, right. And. But I, well, I think that's cool, though, because, like, I don't want to get on this, like, when we were growing up shit. But, like, you know, like, the TGIF shit wasn't for kids. Like, right. I mean, it was, but it wasn't. You know what I mean? Like, like a teenager or, like, an adult could watch that and it could still feel like, you know, like, it doesn't feel like, oh, I'm watching this kid's show. Like, oh, I'm just right. I'm watching Family Matters or whatever. And that's kind of how I feel about watching that well like i was like oh this is like like a throwback to like that kind of shit to where it's just kind of like a show <laughs> and then yeah. like like everybody just kind of like gets from it like what they want kid cuddy and Issa ray uh as the parents yeah, man. uh yeah uh, good shit. yeah it's 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 a cool cast i'm excited uh when's it what's it coming out on max Max, it's a Max show. Well, hopefully it exists. <laughs> Word. <laughs> Word. Did you see I that they're fucking? Man. Do you see that? So yet today, as we're recording this, is the day. I already know where you're going, bro. Yeah, <laughs> Venture Bros hit digital today, meaning pay digital. You have to buy it on like Amazon or Apple TV or that kind of stuff. And then in a few days, it will come out on Blu-ray. And then in 90 days, it's supposed to hit Max. But they just mm. announced, or they just started showing on Max. That Venture Bros, the whole show is leaving Max August 12th before the fucking movie hits Max. Ridiculous. I, I'm i hoping it's a Ridiculous. fuck up because sometimes they do fuck that up and it just stays or that they'll just remove it for a month and bring it back with the movie. The movie. But like, I don't know, man, you got a whole new movie coming out. Yeah. advertise it on your platform and be like right. catch up with venture bros before the finale movie um which by the way is fucking great <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> uh it's so 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 good um and it's also just fucking proof that show should never have been canceled mm. it's it's so solid and it ends in a like satisfying way where you're like all right this is a nice end to the show but also leaves things for you to want more like i they should just make more of the show they should just keep going uh and it's dumb that they probably won't because that show is uh incredible so oh well oh well everything sucks the world's bad um uh what else was uh i don't have much else about this you know what Mm. the uh, the thing i do like about leela and gene stock is Fry just being fully committed to Leela, even oh, as yeah, a technical sure. monster. Love that shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's kind they of really... a nice, it's kind of a nice uh, 
inverse of when they do not even inverse but just flip of when they when the mutants are revolting when fry becomes mm. the mutant and so it's kind of the same kind of the same vibe yeah right, right, right. uh there's there's a little tidbit of inv- information that leela says in a th- in a throwaway line apparently she lays an egg occasionally <laughs> yeah once a year uh, or something like that yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i do it's a bit I of lore that i didn't funny. know um and also when they're when they're doing when i have to like the I guess like the bar that like rodeo place thing. Uh, oh they, right. Uh, <laughs> there's just this random child, and they call her little drunk uh, Sheila. Like, Look out, little <laughs> drunk Sheila! <laughs> <laughs> and you see her, and she has like these powerful bags under her eyes and shit. Like, oh, this is this is little drunk Sheila. This is yeah, she's, this, this child so is very drunk. Um, yeah, dude, this is a sigh. Yeah, there's uh, aspects I like, but it's just it gets so fantastical in like weird mm-hmm. ways. I agree. It just keeps. That's one of those that just kind of keeps going. All right, let's move on to Game of Tones, a fan favorite. Uh, the final episode in sort of these fries past uh, series, I guess. Mm-hmm. Although this one's presented quite a bit differently than the previous three, which are usually presenting an ongoing future story with flashbacks to Fry's past. You've got Luck of the Fryrish, Jurassic Bark, and Cold Warriors as the other three. Yeah. Um, this uh, this one is a beloved episode, and I do really, really like. I do really like it. There's one major aspect of the like big mystery that's going on. Like really the solution to the mystery is what I don't like in this episode. I think it's kind of flimsy, but it feels like it's fine because the rest of it is so strong. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like everything they showcase is so strong that I like kind of forgive its shortcomings in it's like mystery, mystery narrative personally. Uh, How do you feel about game of tones? Uh, This was one of the ones, like I, I think I've said it on the pod before. I didn't like, I didn't know it existed until like your videos. Yeah, uh, but it was my first time seeing it. I like this really? shit a lot, a, a lot. Yeah, like I, I like, and I to, like even like because I've always liked the moment. I've seen the moment in your videos, so I've always yeah. seen it, and I was like, oh, that's cool. Like I like, I like that a lot. That's really sweet. But like the episode before that, and then like watching the episode before that, and then and then getting there. Like, I was like, oh, this shit is like, it was like rough. Like, I like it was, yeah. it made the moment hit harder. Like, I was, yes. I, cause you know, like, cause at first I was like, I was like, oh, I don't know. Like, they were doing like this like invasion thing. I think, well, not yeah. invasion thing, but you know, kind of. And yeah, I was what's like, what's going on with the ship? Yeah. Right. And I was like, I don't know if I like, if I, if I, if I want to do this. Like, what is, like, what is this? But then they, when they get, when Fry, when Fry gets home, it just kind of like turns into like something else. And it's just, yeah. it's, I love, I love everything after that. And that's ultimately like my complaint is there's a disconnect between that tone story with the ship and yeah. it, it doesn't, it just doesn't feel like it satisfactorily combines those two premises. Like with the way that the, you. with the way that the salute, like where they determine it is that he heard the key fob of the ship as he fell into the freezer tube. And like, they reveal that there's another Nibloni in there. And like, I like that stuff is sweaty to me. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, the, the, sweaty, <laughs> the sweatiest thing about it to me is like how they explain how he got home. He said he just took a taxi and like, that's funny, but like what? Right. <laughs> like, right. So he yep. left the ship and took a taxi. Yeah. And, and then he also, what are you talking about? And he also like they went to a bar in 1999 and got wasted. It, like no one would have a problem. With it. <laughs> um, yeah. See, like that stuff is I'm just like, OK, I don't you know, I, I was yeah. like I was anticipating some kind of like it being so late in the show and it being presented as a nibbler related mystery. I think I was also thinking this would somehow relate to 
the previous time that like the previous mystery nibbler stuff, which is the why of Fry, which I know I've gone on record, never shutting up about how he mentions the other. And so part mm-hmm. of me was like, Oh, we got a nibbler Fry relating to the pilot episode story with a mystery. I'm like, this has got to be about his shit and how he was pushed in to save the universe and all that stuff. It's gotta, it's gotta be about that stuff. Um, and it just, I don't know, like, that story just amounted to such a nothing burger. Yeah. It, it's not it that mystery. It it's is. not a satisfying conclusion to it. Uh, yeah, that being I said, that. that being the impetus for him going into his dreams and reliving his final day, all of that stuff is so goddamn good. <laughs> it's so, it's great. so great. It's, um, it's so like, you know, like that. Uh, it's it's like crushing, like see, like Fry is like I just want to talk to my mom, like he's like begging, like to get back into the house, like and all that. It's like it's so rough, like it just I makes know. you so sad. He just wants to talk to his mom, and like that was always kind of uh, it was kind of it was, it was always kind of like a thing with Futurama is like you know they do establish that like Fry's life is like you know not the best and it's kind of like fucked up. So that's why he would be so willing to just start to live out his new life uh, right. in, in this new time. But like also, you know, that still kind of makes you like, like it's like, damn, he, like he like never talks about like his mom, you know what I mean? Yeah. At least early on. But then like now, but so, so I'm glad there's like, they just give him this like, and it's like, and it's like after seeing them again. It's like after yes. he like comes to the dream and sees everybody again, he's like, fuck, I miss my mom. Exactly. <laughs> like, and you know what I mean? I like that a lot. That's one of my favorite moments in the whole episode is like, he's kind of like, he's like, I don't want to relive this goddamn day. And then he gets home and mm-hmm. Seymour runs up and he's like, oh yeah, I love mm-hmm. my dog. <laughs> mm-hmm. He's like, he's like, I forgot you're here. Holy shit. And then he says, uh, he, when he sees his family, he goes, maybe I just convinced myself I hated it because I knew I could never come back, which mm-hmm. is pretty heartbreaking. And then, and then he just says, this is the last, he just acknowledges this is the last time I ever saw my family. This is it. This is the last time I ever saw them. Mm-hmm. Um, and man, that is heavy. Uh, my one small criticism of, I, I'm glad they gave him an episode with his mom and it's handled really well. Um, I wish, I don't know. I wish we got more characterization of his mom outside of her sports stuff. And also like only character in Fry's family that has no name. <laughs> That's a bummer. Is she really? I never <laughs> yeah. realized that. Yeah, they just, she just, she just calls her mom. They never, they never ever reference her actual name. Um, mm. And that they, they say her is, they in a joke say his mother's maiden name in Bender's big score. <laughs> and no, no, no. they don't say her real they don't say her first yeah, name yeah, yeah. though i don't know i just wish i wish they had done that but um the whole montage once he goes in he decides to just have dinner with his family is so mm, great uh it's great it's, it's the best did you get triggered when she tra- referenced charlie brown uh i did <laughs> but not for the reasons that you would think <laughs> charlie brown doesn't kick the football in the christmas special it's snow on the ground <laughs> like, ah. she, she's yelling about the football it doesn't even make any fucking sense <laughs> did they specifically say it was the christmas one there's tree there's the tree in the back so like oh, that's the only right. thing that made sense to me <laughs> right 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 well i mean it is at, so she could have been watching the new year's one but he doesn't do that either he, he reads that war and peace one. He reads one piece the entire Christmas. Yeah, uh, you uh, New fucking Year's Eve. idiot writers! I can't yeah. believe you didn't fucking get that right. She, watching the fucking Thanksgiving special uh, <laughs> right before New Year's Eve. Oh man, yeah, right. That's what. That's the one it would be in, right? Yeah, that's the. That's yeah. the. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I love. I just love all this stuff in the middle. Uh, mm. How good is and also like. I remember leading up to this episode, it was kind of in my family guy hating stage. And I knew, and I heard that (laughs) Seth MacFarlane had a cameo in this episode. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was like, I was just like dreading it. And it's so funny. It's such a funny, it's it's such a funny joke. (laughs) And even back then, (laughs) even back then when I was dreading it and I was just like, but, but in the con, in the context of the episode, I'm like, Oh, that's great. (laughs) That's a really great, that's a really great joke. Um, yeah, 
it's all good it's all really good i, I like uh, uh it, this is this is super early but uh when um when nibbler uh is it starts to talk amy says i always forget that he can talk <laughs> i, I yeah, like that a lot <laughs> i know they always acknowledge it like that and it's and it's funny because like he's sitting there on his like on his like dog bed eating a hunk of meat mm-hmm. and he's just like being a pet and he's like oh i'll talk now <laughs> oh i was there <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly um it's pretty funny um i like when they go and continue his day and we start to see the stuff we've already seen Mm-hmm. I think they have really funny twists on those. Like I love, they do the fry. He, they do you stink loser, <laughs> and, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. and he goes yeah yeah. I like that a lot. <laughs> um, I think that's really funny. And then uh, I love the idea that he's just like because they do the scene that we see only in Jurassic Park where Seymour goes up to trying to stop him. He goes to get on his bike. And then Seymour goes out and he's like, no, it's like, oh, don't worry. And then he and then he goes, wait a second. This is my dream. I can do whatever the hell I want. And he so gets in my fucking makes pocket. Some, yeah, get in my pocket. I like that a lot. It's I nice. like that, too. You know, um, I, I wrote this. I didn't I forgot this happened. Uh, this was before I knew that I was going to really like the rest of the episode. But like, I do think that uh, when when Fry wakes up they tell him that he was sleep for 13 and a half days. I was like, that's fucking stupid. <laughs> that's dumb. <laughs> oh man. Um, you know what joke I really liked also in, in the same vein as them, like do, showing stuff we've already seen um, is when they're going up the elevator and they come in and he goes, pizza delivery for, I see Wiener up every time. <laughs> That's great. I love that a lot. I think it's so funny. <laughs> every time. <laughs> um, oh, I also just thought it was fascinating that they recreate the Michelle breakup scene from the first one and now in HD. Uh, they mm. show it again, but then they bring back Sarah Silverman to do the voice who did not do the, the voice in the in the pilot. So it's interesting that we oh. now have that breakup moment with the actual canonical yeah, voice yeah, yeah, and not yeah. the original voice. Um, and uh, yeah, yeah, it's interesting. Um, let's see. What else do I got in here? OK, so I want to talk a little bit more about why the twist doesn't work for me. OK. <laughs> also, so like. When the guy's explaining it, when the new Nibloni is explaining it, he's just like, well, here's what happened. I was waiting for Nibbler to push you into the freezer tube, whatever. Uh, and I remembered I forgot to lock my car. And so I locked it. And he like, and he like, says it. and then they, and then he goes on to say they went and got drunk and then they forgot where it was. But why did he tell them that he locked the car? Yeah. <laughs> there's nothing of, there's nothing important to what they are yeah. to what to, to the story. Like I know they're looking for what the tone is, but he doesn't know that. Right. That's true. <laughs> he, does, he doesn't know that. Yeah. Um, it's like, it's just for the audience's sake. And it makes no sense in the context of him explaining things to us. There's just stuff like that. That annoys me about this. Um, I do like, that they mentioned Vergon 6. He's like, oh, I had to get a taxi back to Vergon 6 or whatever. But like Vergon 6 is the planet that gets destroyed in Love's Labor's Lost in Space where they find Nibbler. So like they have a base there. That's where he mm. he waits and he ends up getting found by Leela. Good continuity, like that stuff. Um, Yeah, you know, like the solution to the future stuff is lackluster in my opinion. But I guess you. God, that ending man when he go when he's dreaming and he and nibbler reveals that it's his mom's dream Woo, it hits it hits so good uh man i love um, it um she's also watching i know I, i've said this in videos before she's watching the game from the day he disappeared like it's always mm. like the that that game is all is like embedded in her memory so uh so much because that's the day that fry disappeared that she like still dreams about it you know and i just think that's like i think that's a really nice little detail and touch um but you know what i think that like the hug is great and the music is great but you know what i think the moment that is like kind of the the real the real like Mm. fucking heartstring puller is when they show her wake up and look at the picture of fry and smile like that's that's it man oh yeah God, 
I love yeah, it. Yeah, it's good. It's good. It's good shit. Uh, <laughs> that's real good shit. And plus, like when I, you know, because uh, of because of copyright, we can't play the entirety of the clip. So I had I had like from from seeing your video from seeing your video, I didn't like really get the grasp of like the weight of like the music in this scene and like, yeah. like that shot and like every. I was like, whoa, this is like this is next level. Like it's done really it's well. It's it's hard. It's truly one of the great moments in the show. Uh, everything with his family in this episode is some of the best is some of my favorite stuff in this show. Um, mm-hmm. It's really great. It's really, really I don't know. Really did great. I, I, I don't know if I said it already, but like I, I thought it was really cool to see like, like Fry's found family interacting with his real family. Yeah. It's interesting. Uh, I like, cause at first I was like, oh man, they just like ruining this for him. But then like when everybody came, I was like, oh wait, this is kind of cool. Yeah. <laughs> like, it's, and it's, it's interesting cool cause they at. can make it happen without it. Like really changing history, the history mm-hmm. of the, of the show. Like, you know, I mean, I mean, I'm sure there's other ways they could do that, but like, it would be interesting if they ever did a time travel episode where they all genuinely interact with his family. Yeah, um, yeah. and yeah, it's interesting. I, uh, I also think it's interesting how this ending tugs at the heartstrings in the exact opposite way that Jurassic Park does. This gives you the happy heartstring pull. This gives you the ending where, oh, you realize Fry being in his mother's dreams means that he actually could get through and have a genuine moment with her. And and she then goes on and wakes up and, and realizes that Fry's okay. Like she gets this mm-hmm. sense that Fry will be okay and that everything's fine, as opposed to the end of Jurassic Bark, where he's just like, he forgot me a long time ago. And like, no, he fucking didn't. <laughs> right, 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 <laughs> he's right, just right, gonna right. sit there and he's gonna die. And now we're all the most oppressed we've ever been in our lives. <laughs> um, <laughs> and I don't know, it's just curious how one of these episodes they just yeah, it's just curious how they are on complete at different ends of the spectrum. Oh, yeah. Um, like yeah, fascinating. Fascinating. Um, any other thoughts on Game of Tones? Great episode, great fucking episode. Yeah, yeah, good TV, man. I, I, that's that's pretty much all I got for it. All right, let's go on to Murder on the Planet Express. Uh, this is the one that I anticipate of these last four that you're not as high on as I am. Yeah, um, yeah, you got it, you got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and I get why this is like I could kind of tell going in like this is this is such a like pure sci-fi horror thing it doesn't really have the like it doesn't really have the huge trauma emotional stuff it's not really a pure mm. comedy episode um but, but man the, 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 uh, I, you know like i feel like i would have liked this if it was anywhere else <laughs> in this run coming immediately it's off that not coming off that that like i was sick to my stomach on that couch like watching that last right. scene of Friday's mom. you know what that's and fair. then we went here it that's so funny hard. because i never think about it that way just because i watched this stuff week to week you know mm-hmm. and so like i i and now you're watching it for the first time in binge mode so you're like experiencing mm-hmm. things for the first time that way and so i already have this context in my head of like what i, I know what they are i know what to expect right. so that's interesting i didn't quite think of that and that's fair i think that's very fair um especially in the binge context but you know i guess this show's supposed to be watched week to week <laughs> right <laughs> um, yeah. um i do think this is such a fun sci-fi idea though like i it's mm. it's basically the thing and alien and among us <laughs> combined <laughs> into one yeah, into a few trial episode. And I think there's so many funny jokes. I also just like the opening act where it's like, everyone is suspicious of everyone else for some reason at the company and <laughs> everyone is wrong, but still right to be suspicious because someone has fucked them over. Even if they are thinking it's the, even though if they are like realizing it's the wrong person or it's for a different reason, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like I laughed really hard when Fry was like, Bender has definitely been shining his ass with my toothbrush. And it, and then he's like, wait, no, he just stole my kidney. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty great. Um, yeah, I think it's pretty funny. Uh, and then, Word. and then, yeah, and then they use that to have like, oh, everyone has to team up with one another um, to uh, to deal with this like this imposter alien who is impersonating people and eating people. So everyone has to team up with the people that they have an issue with, and it's like a team building exercise. Obviously, that's the big twist in the end. It was all a team building exercise. Mm-hmm. Right, 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 um, right. Uh, 
but I think that's I don't know. I just like the tone of them of them having to sneak around the ship, not knowing who is the alien, uh, you know, being suspicious of everyone else. I, it's, it's just fun. I think this is fun okay. sci fi shit. You know, that's what I, I and I'm kind of, you know, I, I understand in the binge why this might feel weird and out of place. All but right. for me in the uh, in the la- being in one of the last episodes of the show, I'm glad we just got a fun crazy sci-fi thing you know <laughs> yeah. i get you i get yeah. you yeah i do think that like i think it's like i think it's like really fun like they take that like that like idea like the like imposter idea and then like use it several times for just like killer like humor for real for yes. real that entire sequence with like the professor yeah and I love like that he's so much. like Hermie. it's it's and then it's like amy it's so it's funny it's funny as fuck and then yeah. like uh <laughs> the the fry and leela shit with it like making yeah, out the she's closet biting yeah <laughs> and he, he says wait a second i know what's going on here i'm the monster it's so fucking <laughs> it's so funny. funny yeah it's great <laughs> that shit is great uh i and, think they I, I think they they uh they used it like for humor like it's a great lamps for real because i was like laughing totally a lot, for sure yeah it's a great funny episode i like i like when bender and fry get over their shit and they and they do what they need to do and then they like <laughs> fry gets in and they just merge into one thing yeah <laughs> into one guy who's call ourselves friender um <laughs> that design that design is rough yo design is crazy that design is rough <laughs> We can add that uh, to uh, we can add that to the list of cursed, things that cursed that have designs. been done on yeah, the curse. <laughs> yeah. Add that to the list that of things that have because uh, that curse design. <laughs> the list of things that have um that have been done on both Futurama and Phineas and Ferb because they do that. <laughs> There's an episode where uh, they were using a machine that like split people's personalities. So like they would, it would turn them into uh, different, like on some Stefan or Kel shit. Like you know, yeah. Stefan and Steve were like a different person at one point. Right, right. They right, do right. that, but then I think at the end of the episode they like reverse it, and then like the machine hits Phineas and Ferb, and they turn into one character design. And it is the <laughs> worst <laughs> thing I've ever seen. It's oh, so man. nasty. <laughs> it's disgusting. It's gross. They reminded uh, me of that. Um, I think this episode ends in a perfect joke too i'm glad this episode ends on a good joke where just oh, like it's a good joke. the guy comes in and he's just like it was a friend it was a team building exercise everyone's eating pizza in the cabin and fry and bender both just fucking laser the shit they out of him shot the <laughs> shit. oh they shot the fuck out of him yo i man that so shit was good. sick I love it it's just lot. like uh it's it, it's just like when bender shot the professor like Bender I know. I was just thinking about that. <laughs> he shot the shit out of him. So they good. do that here, so and then, ah, uh, dude, and then after that, they're watching the TV, and it says, "It says McMaster's Mick missing." Kill <laughs> yeah. me. <I'll, laughs> oh, and then they, I forgot about the end end joke where yeah, yeah, where yeah, they're yeah. they're both offered the giant reward, and like well, whoever turns in the other will get a full pardon or whatever, and just the like yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> being suspicious and looking at the phone. It was like great. it was like double the amount. In like the full pardon, like it was like yes. really enticing, <laughs> right? I uh, I really like, yeah. I I think this is a good episode. I mean, I just do think the season ends like they ended their run so strong. I was like, I remember, I just remember being so unbelievably happy in the in the last four weeks of Futurama's existence mm-hmm. back in 2013. I was like, they're doing it. <laughs> like this is all so good. <laughs> Game of Tones made me cry. Murder on the Planet Express <laughs> was crazy cool. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, you got any more about Planet, Murder on the Planet Express? Uh, nah, nah. That's all. That's all. That's all my notes. All right. Let's move on to another episode I love, Stench and Stenchability. Uh, Zoidberg's farewell, Zoidberg's Mm -hmm. goodbye. And uh, God, what a good, this is the one that just really feels so like cathartic Mm -hmm. (laughs) Uh, with Zoidberg's whole thing. Like all these, so many of his stories were about, he had, he literally had episodes about not being able to find love. He's like, that's an ongoing joke that he's poor and unlovable and gross. And they just like the way they do this episode with this character, Marianne played by Amelia Clark, who is like not even huge yet. I don't think game of Thrones had even started yet. It might have might have just started when uh, she plays Marianne. She's also well, Daenerys. Uh, She's Daenerys the, in game of Thrones. 
Cause, oh, because the episode is Game, Game of Tones. Tones. Yeah, that's what I was about to say. So it's like the well, it's also a book, right? but no, it probably had to. But I, but they probably wouldn't have named it that if the show hadn't come out. Right. Um, so that's def- the show definitely had started. You're right. Um, and uh, yeah, just like having him genuinely fall in love. I, I do think it's kind of funny how they like kind of retcon the whole idea. They're like, oh, Zoidberg has such a bad stench that <laughs> that like no one can be around him. And I'm like, oh, they've never even really brought this up before. Yeah, <laughs> like I mean, they've said he smells. Like he, but, like, yeah, he, yeah. Does, he, he definitely stinks, but they like they really like play it up. Well, we've talked sure. we've talked about that before about like that's just kind of something that like TV Sitcoms shows and, do. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Like if if the episode is about homer being selfish he is relentlessly selfish you know what totally. i mean in order to get the point across so I, I i just took it as like that same kind of shit here for sure um and that yeah that's right that's exactly what it is uh i you know what i also forgot they had already brought roberto back here like he's the one who mugs mm-hmm. them i'm like they just executed him yeah i know i was thinking that but i didn't want to write it down because i was like maybe i missed something and i just wasn't right. fa- i don't know <laughs> but uh yeah that's how i felt too i was like is he dead <laughs> yeah oh well i it's sometimes they stick to it like calculon sometimes they don't like roberto uh <laughs> i guess yeah. i wish they had stuck to it this time me too um but this one is so good like the the montages of them falling for each other the whole idea that she can't smell uh, she's a flower girl who can't smell, which is like got a little bit of fun irony to it there. Um, and yeah, like Zoidberg protecting her from Roberto, her falling for him. It's just all sweet. He's such a sweet guy and they have such a sweet little connection. And then I just love his dilemma is that he he's Zoidberg's a good guy. He's the best. He's the best person in Futurama. <laughs> and uh, and this whole idea is if he wants to do the right thing, which is he can fix Marianne's smell a sense of smell uh it's potentially going to mean he loses his one real chance at love that he's had uh yes. and that's just such a good such a good zoidberg dilemma they did such a great mm. job with that um, yeah, i think i, I think this is uh i think this is the most sincere episode of the entire show hell uh, yeah i love that. i think it's like he zoidberg is relentlessly like kind and forgiving and like you really like feel for him and like even like i don't know there's like there's many 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 moments where the planet express crew could have been so fucking mean to him sure throughout this and they aren't and they aren't <laughs> they're supportive <laughs> it's they like actually this is, this give is him the... like a real yeah they give him a real mm-hmm. win he doesn't have he's not getting beat down while it's happening it's just like the yeah. dilemma is the core of this episode yeah i think this is the most well okay i think his part is the most sincere uh thing in futurama oh and then the we got B the B story, story. It's with nuts. the B- it's, it's so funny. I'm all for like asshole bender, ridiculous bender. <laughs> Dancing on the corpse, I was like, all right, all right, know, that is insane. too much. <laughs> but like, it's also like, obviously, they kind of set it up. Like, you knew it was yeah, going to happen. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, it's going to be, you know, it's going to bring her back to life. And then it like, also, like, they have their nice ending where they're like, they kind of like, are dancing together and still kind of give mm-hmm. each other shit at the end. Like that's nice. That's I, li- I like how it wraps up. <laughs> it's the, um, it's the, it's the idea that Bender did not know <laughs> that right. that was going to, he's just like, the body mm-hmm. is like limp and he's just like, te- going to dance like, on I, the corpse. I yelled, Whoa, in my living room. Like, like my jaw was like, Oh my God. <laughs> my, my note is just Bender tap dancing on a dead little girl is insane. <laughs> like, just, that is insane. Um, oh, man. did you notice that after she gets the nose transplant, her nose is a little different? <laughs> Like yeah, it's, a, it's I, um, actually a different nose. <laughs> yeah, because yeah. when they when they pulled it out the box, I was like, "Oh, that that's not like the same nose she has." Right. And I was wondering if it was going to change the design, and it did. I liked I liked that. Uh, I like that attention to detail. Uh, when when before she can smell, when they're just like going on all those dates to all those places that stink, they take the scenic route to New Jersey, and I was like, what the fuck? (laughs) (laughs) Wait, didn't they, um, didn't they reference the train again? 
Or Did am I they? thinking of something else? I might be thinking of the I might be thinking of the Oh no, I think I'm thinking of the Venture Bros movie. Because in the Venture oh. Bros movie, in the later seasons, uh the monarch start he he usually he's like this villain and he normally operates out of this cocoon, but in the later seasons, he operates out of his parents' old house that he inherited in Newark. <laughs> and so <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so and so he's in New York and he's like and he's gonna take that train that we mentioned last time. <laughs> that <laughs> what is it that what is it called? The path or whatever? The path. The path. Why has <laughs> nobody told me that? <laughs> I mean, it's like literally only in the last two seasons of Venture Bros. So like, it's like, yeah, I don't know. It's, I don't know. <laughs> it's pretty. Funny I get though. like, I get, I get a message. No bullshit. I get like Maybe a they message. Maybe want it to be like, spoiled for you. <laughs> Maybe I. I get a it. message a week, bro. I get like a message a week of somebody being like, "Yo, have you checked out Venture Bros? Like, you ever want to do Venture Bros? Yeah. That's how you get me to do Venture Bros. You tell me that this should <laughs> take place in Newark. <laughs> I cannot decide if i think you will if venture bros is up your alley or not um i can't Lord. so i think on one hand it's it's got all these really great references and homages back to classic cartoons and shit johnny quest style stuff mm-hmm. um on the other hand it's like kind of an actiony it's an actiony superhero y it's like very different than any other superhero y thing because it's like mm. the whole I, the whole premise of the show is like what if being a hero and villain was overly controlled by unions who determined how and you could and couldn't art like be arch nemeses with each other? <laughs> and like there's That's all these funny. treaties. It's very funny. It's like That's funny. The, it's yeah. incredibly dense lore, but it's so satisfying. Incredible yeah. world building. Great characters. <laughs> uh, it's such a great show. But it is like, you know, at its core, it is like. It's it takes itself seriously, even though it's like homage and parody the whole right, time, right, you know? Right. Yeah, it's it's cool. I just think um, that it's so funny that again, once a week I get told this. <laughs> N- nobody has ever explained what this show was to me. Until you started talking, <laughs> I never knew that I didn't know what it was about. Right, <laughs> like, right. <laughs> you guys are doing it wrong, man. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta let yeah, me know what I'm getting into. It's really good. You should definitely check it out. And now that's oh well, I'll send you a I'll send you a a DVD set or something since it's getting taken away. From it HBO is, isn't it? Max. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Fuck. Uh, we did talk about that. Uh, I saw like man. a, I saw like the creator reply to that tweet and be like, Hey, what? what? Co-creator. He said, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah. what? He had no idea. I can't believe that's it. That's rough, it man. Un- I hate shit. I'm not into shit like that. I hate it. Oh, it's so frustrating. So, so, so frustrating. Um, man. Uh, Okay. Anything? Oh, well, let's talk about this ending real quick. Uh, oh, yeah. the, there's so much good dialogue at the end. Uh, when I love the, I love the twist that she's just like, she, you know, the idea that she's, she hasn't had a sense of smell, but her brain has still been like processing what she's around and what she likes. So like, she mm-hmm. doesn't like the smell of flowers, but she does love the smell of Zoidberg because she likes Zoidberg. I just love that line. Like, I like, I like the way you smell because I like you. I love that. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> and like, so you cute. know, like it, it does, it does kind of, there's also kind of like a, like, I don't know, like we grow up hearing that certain things are bad smells. Right. So like, it's you curious. know, like she never had anything like that. So right. she gets to like make her own. That's, that's the pre- and then like they give it a perfect job, uh, like a garbage woman. Are you serious? Like that's yeah, perfect. I know. <laughs> like that's that's so great. I love that. I love before she goes under the Anastasia. Well, first of all, I love the Anastasia. I love uh, uh, Amy doing it, and it's like she's like <laughs> tapping for a vein, and then like just like a laser. I love. <laughs> oh that. yeah, and that's right. That's a great. It's like one of their <laughs> classic great. great future tech jokes. Yeah, I um, love that, and I love. Uh, I love that right before she goes under, she says, smell you later. It's perfect dialogue. That's like the perfect line that you would have somebody right. say at that moment. Smell you later. I love that. Yeah. Smell you later. Yeah, and good. then I also just like, what is she? She also, um, he, he says something like, it's like, let me kiss you one last time or whatever. And she's just like, well, there'll be many more or whatever. She's like very reassuring. He just, like, he yeah. just starts crying <laughs> yeah. after that. <laughs> poor guy. Um, and then yeah, the other end where she, she's like, I have to dump you or whatever. And just dump literally dumps him into the thing. It's so funny. Cause I still mm. got comments from people who thought that they broke up. <laughs> and I'm like, no, so it's a play on words. <laughs> and then why did they kiss? They kiss. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, 
I love this episode. I think it's so good. I really hope that Marianne is referenced in the return and that they're together in some way. I don't know if I have much hope because Zoidberg's whole thing is just being sad and lonely. You know what I mean? Like, Mm. It's just, and I this, hope but, they, but the, the, the show is supposed to be over, so there's supposed to be an end to the thing. It's supposed to be an just ending a, to the thing. But you know, that's what this is like. This is the kind of shit that is, you know, I was thinking about this too. Um, because, like, right, like the Zoyberg thing is like something that like you will want to carry over, even though that would mean they would have to kind of change how people are to him. Yes. But also, I was thinking about Calculon, and it's like, do you have reserved Calculon? <laughs> in these new ones because he never goes back he like kind of learns like this is how i give a good performance i maybe right. i should talk like this but time. also to be fair when we see him down in robot hell at the end he's giving his big hammy performances that are annoying the shit out of the robot devil <laughs> oh, he is. yeah um mm, okay yeah. it's more about him having the ability i guess i don't know it's interesting it's yeah. like yeah i don't know i'm Oh, I'm so curious. It's going to be so interesting. <laughs> 10 more episodes coming, man. That's so nuts. 20. I mean, 20 yeah. at least. And honestly, oh, yeah. probably 40. It seems like it's going to be 40 in my, at least. <laughs> 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 um, all right. Should we move on to the Let's finale? The fourth, but not final series finale. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. you know what i do have i do have some stuff i want to like say and vent about the nature of futurama and its ongoing finales at the end mm. of this that i want to talk about because i think it i think okay. it lends itself to how you feel about liking certain finales more than others and just about the journey of the show as a whole i and i'm i'm like excited to like i don't know just <laughs> analyze okay. This is more than just the finales, but the journey of Futurama in general, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. Okay, let's talk about this last episode. Meanwhile, I know you have never liked as much as Devil's Hands. I still think Devil's Hands is a better episode. Um, Mm -hmm. But I've always loved this as a series finale, which now I don't know if I can... Like, now it's the the other question is... Now it's an episode. Is it just an episode now? (laughs) Is it just an episode now? Uh, but that's what we'll talk about. Also, I'll, I'll, I'll talk mm. about that later. But uh, let's just let's talk about it as a series finale, because yeah, right, like sure. right now, as we're talking about it, that's what it is. <laughs> like, now, when you right hear now. this, yes, <laughs> this is this is one of the very last conversations that is ever going to be had this way. Yes, uh, I think <laughs> that's I, right. like ever. <laughs> that's right. We're kind of doing this yeah. perfectly. Right. Um, <laughs> what? Is, so, uh, how do you feel? on this rewatch about meanwhile. All right. We're going to be talking about this for a while. <laughs> um, so at first, because I think one of, one of the issues that I not, it's not even really an issue, but I guess a reason that I liked it less uh, was that like, I always liked how like, the devil's hands are I will play things. I always liked how that was like, it was like a, like a, like a sneaky finale. Like it's a yes. normal episode. It's an open but it, end. Yeah. But it hits you with like a, it's still like a, a very good, like emotional punch. And it has totally. like this great, like climax. Like, and there's something so I've impressive always about pulling that off. Yes. Right. For sure. And I've always, I've always really, really liked that about it. And I, yeah. And I, and I've, oh, I think I've internalized that. Like that. I think that might be how I like, my finales but i think like as i've done videos and like full retrospectives and have had to like chase whole shows and stuff like that like i think it like i think it i think it varies there's there's some shows that have like two finales like recess or something like that like to where it's it's like it's like a similar thing right like because recess had the uh they had like a normal epic like last episode and then they had the movie which came after those but then they had another movie that like is supposed to end it with her in a different grade. And I always kind of like that one. And I think it's, the, I think the same idea is that like, uh, I think when you, when you go into it, like actively like pushing to the audience, this is the last one. Like, you know yeah. what I mean? Like they're like, 
real they're doing so much to emotionally tell you that this is the last one right and i think the reason it turned me off so much for so many years is because i didn't like that right um but yeah i think this watch i finally let it go Mm -hmm. i finally let that shit go and like i was like Oh, you know what? I get. I still like, you know, I still like the other episode more. But I was like, I, I get it now. Yes. Like, I really, like, I actually get it now. <laughs> right. <laughs> like, totally. Yeah. I totally understand that. And like, I just, I also think. So you know what? I'll even before we talk about this, I think this is a good time to talk about what I wanted to talk about before we yeah, get fuck into it. the good. content of the episode. Mm-hmm. I think. So I've been a, I've been watching Futurama since it started. Like I'm that old. <laughs> I, I like, I start, I was, I was watching it on Fox the year it came out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I didn't watch every episode on Fox. I fell in love with the show. I had watched it and enjoyed it. I was a big Simpsons fan at the time, but I fell in love with it when it was an adult swim and the DVDs came out. That's when I fell in love with the show. <clears throat> but I, I have essentially just been on the journey. This show has been on with it the whole time. You know what I mean? And so, mm. For me, the Devil's Hands Are Idle Playthings was still a series finale. And in my mind, because of my journey with the show, is still, in a way, a series finale. You know what I mean? Right. Like, like I, for, for four years, that mm-hmm. was the last episode of the show for me. That time in my life still existed where that was mm-hmm. the end of the show. Uh, and in the same way, now, meanwhile has been the last episode of Futurama for 10 years for me, even Mm. though there's going to be another one in two days. (laughs) And, and so part of me is almost more appreciative of this insane journey that the show has gone on because like that journey of thinking the show is over and this being the end and then, Oh, we get more. And then now maybe this is the end. Oh, but we're going to get more. And now maybe this is the end. Maybe this is the end. Like that, is all a part of what I love about my journey with this show. And, you know, like no disrespect to anyone who's just binged the whole show as exists. And that's how they've consumed it. Like that's, that's like, you know, people consume it, how they consume it. That's how it is. Mm -hmm. But for me, like I still see when I watch devil's hands, I still see it as a definitive end. end. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Even though, even though I know there's more, like I still see it Mm -hmm. as an end. I, I still, and you know, like a little bit to a, deg- a le- lesser degree into the wild green yonder and overclockwise because overclockwise, we knew there would be more. I mm. knew it was written to potentially be that. And that's still part of it as well. Into the wild green yonder. I didn't, you know, like into the wild green yonder. It was a short period of time. It was truly only, I think less than a year mm. of watching into the wild green yonder and then finding out there would be more Futurama. But when I watched Into the wild green yonder, I was like, that's an end. Like that's Fry and Leela kissing and go them going through the wormhole and you know even though i think that movie has some issues itself great right. ending like i was happy yeah. with that as it's ending um and so i don't know like i'm just trying especially now with the show coming back i'm trying to reflect on how this journey has unfolded over the 23 years that the show's mm-hmm. been a thing which is insane um and how do i like do i see this ending as being ruined now that there's new episodes coming right. in a couple of days, or do I, or will I, it's, or do, will I just always have the feeling and memories that I have of this being the last episode of the show for 10 years? You know what I mean? Right. Like that's part of my journey with the show. And I don't think I'll ever be able to just like toss that out the window because there's more, mm-hmm. you know? And so I don't know. I was just thinking about that a lot this time. And especially with y- knowing you love the devil's hands ending so much more and me also loving that ending, but not, mm-hmm. but just being like, why, why don't I mind that that's not the ending anymore? You know what I mean? Sure. <laughs> like, sure. Yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, 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 yeah. I guess um, you. Yeah. So I don't know. I just think it was inter- interesting to break, try and break it down that way. It's like, like the journey of the mm-hmm. show is almost one of the things that makes my my like how much I love it and how much I, how big of a fan I have been of it even more worthwhile, (laughs) you know, it's like, I've been on this huge long journey that is now can't believe it's going to continue. It's going to keep going, which is crazy. Yeah. Yeah. I've, I've been, 
I've been on I've been on it not as not as long as you have, obviously, but like you know, like I could I, the only thing I didn't do was watch the show on Fox. Right. Like, for I, sure. That period, that four years that you're talking about. That's that when you, you became a fan. The end, yeah. Exactly. And then yeah. like so I it's, had DVDs it's close. and shit. It's really yeah. close. Yeah. Yeah. I still had I still had years of like, okay, this is the last, this is it. This is the last one. And I went years thinking that until like the, the movie. And then like from then on, like, you know, like even even though I, um, there's so many of these I had never seen, I knew when Futurama was going to end. Like yes. I re- I saw this, like I remember, I, I remember seeing it the night, like everything I, 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 I do. Um, so you know, like similarly, like you were saying, like you you're able to kind of contextualize like both as like a, like a, like an ending. Yeah. Uh, even though that's kind of like it's kind of weird that 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 that's possible, but yeah, like I agree, like right. I'm able to do that too. I think one of my one of my issues though, and that, this kind of goes for like, especially now, because I so much shit is coming back. I'm kind of becoming of the mindset of like just I I let I, it, I, I let miss yeah, yeah I miss when like the last time we saw these characters was the last time we saw these characters yeah and I think about like uh, I think about like uh like I don't know like 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 King of the Hill right especially like since those are out of order somebody yeah. like you'd like you like you like it happened to you watching them watching the last bit and and I was being like this like, is clearly you? the end yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and then it's not and then it's like the same thing with Futurama how I was explaining to my roommates like there's just no way to watch the show properly because even if you buy all of the DVDs like what if nobody tells you that there's four movies in between right then what are you For gonna sure. do like you For feel sure. me like it's just like there's no yeah. way to watch the and like I don't like the idea of uh, some 15 year old discovering Futurama because it like happens like in uh, up here on Hulu. And then like sure. they watch the entire thing and they don't get that. They don't get the year gap of like, OK, yeah. this is it. This is the end. They don't get that. They don't get that with this one either. Because but like you know immediately what? after it's going to be I agree. One. I agree to an extent. There's a few things I want to mm-hmm. address there because I do agree with that where I'm just, but it's also, that is also very much a like a little bit of a curmudgeon <laughs> thing. I feel, you know what I mean? Where I'm just like, mm. people should be able to love this and enjoy it the way I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah, yeah. and, but there's like, <clears throat> but there's, that's never going to be possible for everyone. You know what I mean? Like, for sure. And like, and you know, you can do your best to try and give people that context so that they can appreciate it that way. But, um, you know, like think about, I mean, th- like just like that's, that's the case with all TV shows. Think about shows that have been, shows that have been huge hits on right. TV and they were this like big, this big giant like uh, sensation that everyone <laughs> has you know Mm -hmm. this big giant sensation that that everyone's talking about uh like twin peaks for instance twin peaks is one of my favorite shows of all time uh twin peaks when it came out in 1989 was a huge sensation that no one could shut the fuck up about everyone like didn't stop talking about it i'll never experience that (laughs) you know what i mean but i really Mm -hmm. love what twin peaks is (laughs) and right um yeah and like yeah so like i do agree to an extent and to bring it back to what you said about in general, not wanting things to like come back, just let things end. I am a hundred percent on board with that in general. Like that Mm. is, if you ask me about almost anything that is going to be my stance is like, let's make new things. We don't need to bring back old things. Like that's Mm. fine. I will say, the more I think about Futurama, I'm just like, but that's that's kind of what Futurama always is. It's always <laughs> dying and coming back. <laughs> and, yes, and, so, and so I'm like, all right, yeah, it did end perfectly. It was a great ending. But also like a 10 years later revival is a crazy new chapter in Futurama's never ending cycle of death and resurrection. It is. Because, <laughs> you know, like... uh because 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 I, I do think I do think you're right. I do think that it's like a little a little pompous to be like people didn't experience the, the right yeah. way. You know what I mean? But I do. But like, I think where, where what I'm what I'm getting at is like, like, does this. OK, let me back it up. A 15 year old discovering Futurama for the first time. Let's say there's 12 seasons now. Yeah. Right. Like. 
does that remove the emotionality of what this is? Is True. this just like, huh, that was... Huh, why, did, why did that why did it end like that <laughs> yeah, yeah yeah you know what i mean like um, and i think that i think that's i'm more i'm always i'm always like on like the okay what was the what was the intent behind this like what what was the what was the the idea that will be so and i don't think it would be like uh, yeah I, I guess this it's the fear of like that not being translated yes uh, for sure is what is like it, 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 if I feel like a show has a finale like that, then that's when I'm really like, come on, like we don't gotta, we don't gotta. Totally. Do um, so but. I, you're right. I agree. I yeah. It's just like almost like there's no real way to combat that, right? Like, uh, I mean, unless we you have like, to see. <laughs> yeah. Well, and that's the other yeah. thing is like we are, we're already at this point where we've consumed the show differently than everyone else. Like now there's people who just became fans since it ended and they didn't really get this. They've already not gotten the sense of start and stop progression that we have with this show. Mm -hmm. And, or people um, that found out about it, like through us, they were watching it. Through yeah, us. exactly. You know I mean? yeah. And you know, I mean, we've, we've got people, we, I've, I've gotten comments on people on my channel and on, and on our podcast channel uh, that who didn't know the movies were movies because they're, they're in Hulu. They're in episodes. Mm -hmm. Like there's some people who just thought those, that's like a weird serialized season with four serialized stories. Um, there's people, there's a lot of people who don't realize over clockwise was meant to be a potential right. finale. Granted, that's most people because like, unless you're really fucking in tune with shit like me, cause that, cause it never was presented as though it was a finale. I just knew and other people knew that that was written in case it were a finale right. um, in case they didn't get picked up for more. Uh, even just like going back to our last episode, we were talking about decision 3012. We've already gotten comments from people who are like, I had no idea that was supposed to be about Obama. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, Which we, we kind of expected. <laughs> right. 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 Yeah. But it is, but it is interesting. Like it's almost just everyone's got their own personal journey with that shit, you know? Mm -hmm. And, uh, and I don't know. And may, who knows? Maybe they can go back and rewatch and recontextualize when they learn that shit. Maybe not. Right. Maybe they'll never be able to do that. Uh, but it's going to be really interesting to start finding the people who start watching the show within the next five years and watch all of it like yeah. this. And, you know, like, right. I mean, like, you know, I feel like the astute viewer, some people might not care, but the astute viewer is probably going to be like, huh, why did that end like that? And then see, oh, and then probably that season was it. 2013 and this one's 2023. Interesting, you know, yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, like there's right, that kind of right. stuff. But um, yeah, it's going to be really interesting. Yeah, I don't know. It's like because there's, there's I don't know, I don't really there's certain things where it's like you can remember like when a specific song came out or when a specific movie came out and right. be like and be like, oh, that was that was that was a moment. I wouldn't trade that for the world. But at the same time, uh, 20 years later, you sitting down with your friends and you found out that said friend never heard the song or never saw the movie. You show it to them and you don't feel like they need that cultural context. Sure. Like you can still show them that song and be like, OK, cool. But it, but then there's there's certain things like this to where it's just I don't I don't know if it's the emotionality in the episode or what, but there's certain things where I'm like. Uh, no, it's kind of a, it's kind of a way that I wish you would have uh, <laughs> uh, seen this. Um, totally. But you know, like, it, it, I yeah. think I think ultimately, as long as they find, as long as they find it and they enjoy it, I think there's, it's cool. But it's, well, that's it's, true. Know, I don't know. But there's a lot of things like that. I think about that. Like, like you never really watched Star Wars except for a couple of them. And like, mm -hmm. if I were going to show you Star Wars, if we were going to do that for the pod, I. I would go in release order, not like chronological order. Like, you know what I mean? Like I would be like, no, we're going to watch four five, six. And then right, we're going right, to watch right, one, right. two, three. And then we'll watch the yeah. sequels. And like, That's, and it's like, yeah. it's, it's like, you can't, but you can't expect everyone to do it that way. You like, if there's a series right, of movies exactly. that are one, two, three, four, five, six, someone's going to watch it. One, one, two, two three, three, four, five, six. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's true. That's true. It's yeah. just like, we, uh, we, uh, I was showing my, my roommate E.T. He had never seen E.T. And, yeah. 
we have I have the ET DVD. My grandma brought it for me when I was a kid, but I brought ET on Prime instead. And he was like, "Why the fuck did you buy it if we have the DVD?" I said, "No, because the DVD has the shitty CGI remaster. The C- and you can't watch remaster. it that way. <laughs> yeah, like you yeah. can't watch it with and the walkie talkies it, and shit. And you can watch it and you can watch it in high def. Yeah, Spielberg has gone on record saying he really regrets doing that. Yeah, and um, I was like, you can't yeah. watch it that way. But at the same time." Ah, that might be. What is that like? If somebody, somebody is gonna buy that ET DVD, and they're gonna and that's watch how they're ET, gonna know it. and they're gonna fucking love ET. <laughs> you yes. know what I mean? Like, even yes. though they watched it that way, they're still gonna love it. Even though it's the wrong way, they're still gonna, you know what I mean? Because it's still at, at the core, the emotion is still like, you know, that's still the, the film. I don't know. It's like this is the kind of shit that comes with being like an artist. And like right. in, into like this kind of shit. When is something um, done? When does it belong to the people? When is it? Yeah. This is, that's the George Lucas of it all. He because he's the. I mean, like Spielberg did that after that. Back to Star Wars, like he did the remasters of his original trilogy, and he changed so much about them for the re-release. Mm. Many changes are just not good, uh, and it's like, I mean, to the point where he won't release the originals in high def. Like they, like there are people no, who have gone to extreme lengths to recreate the original cuts with as much high def footage as they can find from various sources just to make it close to the original. And that's yeah, what yeah, I prefer yeah. to watch. That is generally what I prefer to watch. There's a few changes that I'm, that I like, but it's weird. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah. Right, there's a lot of yeah, weird yeah. conversations there. Okay. Um, let's talk about the, the, the episode itself. I'm glad we right. went on that tangent. Um, I think this is such a good episode. Uh, I think it's funny. I think it's, and I obviously think it's so heartfelt and I just think it's just such a nice ending. And they really did think this was the end. I don't think they Mm -hmm. had any real reason to expect that they would come back 10 years later. I know of all shows, this is the one that would, but (laughs) yeah. Um, But I remember reading an article right before this episode from David X Cohen and them asking him that question. He's like, we're pretty sure this is it. Like we're pretty confident this is it. And we're going and like, yeah, we have an out there's a way at the end of this episode for us to write more if we want, but this is, we're writing this as though it's the last episode and that's what, that's the, that's the route we're taking. Um, and I think after doing that three other times, that is why it's totally valid to go this heavily into it and heavy handed mm-hmm. with how much of an end it is. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, and that's what I, I love about it is I'm just like as a fan for all those years and me being like, this really might be it. This could be the end of the show to get such a satisfying, happy end. I'm like, yes, beautiful. Perfect. <laughs> right, um, right. Yeah. Uh, so hey, I think, I mean, it's also fun that they just go to Luna park immediately. Um, like from the second episode of the whole show, one of the first mm. times they ever connected is on the moon. Uh, when Which they're... is like, a, is like that's a finale thing to do. Like take yeah. them somewhere from like the the first the first couple episodes. That's such a yep. finale thing to do. Um, yeah. The whole thing about her like flying out flying out is pretty crazy, and her surviving it. But I like that being sort of the impetus of Fry being like, "Fuck, what am I doing? I like this is the person I love. Don't know how long we're gonna have. Let's like just fucking do this mm-hmm. thing. Let's get together." Um, and. I love, I also love him using this time button so that he can get her a really nice ring. I think that's funny. I think that's cute. Uh, but I love the joke where she, he, he, he proposes and shows the ring and she goes, Fry, this is so sudden after 13 years. It's <laughs> 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 a good joke. That's great. Um, the, the, uh, going back just a little bit, the, uh, <laughs> the little thing under the logo says Avenge Us and those like bleeding letters. And I always thought that was so funny. It's super funny. It's super <laughs> Avenge funny. Avenge Us is nuts. <laughs> <laughs> it is, especially in the bloody letters because they rarely do different fonts. Yeah. <laughs> they like occasionally do, but it's rare. And like yeah. that, or like, or do stylized, super stylized fonts. That one is, mm. I love that one. Avenge Us is great. Um, I love all the jokes with Professor just shredding Zoidberg's money, <laughs> him yeah, stealing his guy. money. I like him stealing his money and just like going over and over to like <laughs> make him sad. Um, the and then guy. at the and then I love the moment where so Fry when Fry starts cycling time and they get into the little time shelter and he's showing them that. Uh, and he goes, "Here's what happens if we like hit the if he hits the button while we're out of the shelter." And he tosses the money out and it shreds. And Zoidberg <laughs> just goes, 
Oh, <laughs> that's a perfect little sad story yeah, yeah, yeah. moment. Um, also, I just like I just think the Vampire State Building is really funny. <laughs> it's like it's a like, giant building that has like a crypty weird. looking like yeah, house at the top, gargoyles and shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. totally. Um, man, I can't believe this got nominated for an Emmy and lost to so Bob's Ber- to a Bob's Burgers episode. Which one? Do you know which one it was? I think it was Mazzaltina. I don't know that one. I don't don't think I know that one. I just know the name. Let's see. Uh, 2014. Man, I just like, yeah, Mazzaltina. I don't actually know. Don't actually know. Let's look it up. Mazzaltina Bob's Burgers. Is it great? Um... It's the one Tina's not like makes make the cut on the guest list for Tammy's bat mitzvah, but gets to attend as part of the catering staff when Bob and the family are hired for the event. I don't what remember season? this one. Oh, this is early wait. season four. Yeah, I think I've only I've seen that, but I've only seen it once. I don't remember. I mean, I love Bob's. I'm happy. I'm happy that it wins things. I held that Emmy actually. Personally, have held that Emmy. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but. Uh, I think it belonged to Futurama. <laughs> uh, I'm always going to be salty about things that don't win Emmys and should. <laughs> yeah. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, so obviously the big, this is this, this is all like, you've got this whole time button plot. You've got this uh, Fry wanting to propose the Leela plot. I like how they coincide because A, he uses it to get the, get the ring. And then B, he tells her to meet him at the Vampire State Building she doesn't show up, so he decides to jump off of it, uh, only to realize that his clock, his watch is wrong because he's been using the time button so much. It's just a perfect, mm. simple intersection of those two stories where I'm like, well, yeah, you fucking blew it. And uh, and then, like, obviously, it feels like this whole idea was built around. It feels like I very effectively built around the idea of someone having this 10 second button and falling off a building, but not being able to get back to the top. Like, you know what I mean? It's basically yeah, that yeah, yeah, horror yeah. story of an idea. Right, right. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, I've always, I've all, even as a kid, I've always hated fry splattering on the dude, ground. I that wrote, shit is rough. I really <laughs> wrote fry smashed on the ground is so gross is one of my notes here. It's so yeah. gross. It's I've so, so, so disgusting. Yeah. And also like his hair is always just perfectly intact. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like his, his hair on top of a blob of goo. Right. <laughs> um, man. But then once they, they get there, they save fry. He smashes the time button. Everything freezes. And this is where it just like is kind of a love letter to fry and Leela and to kind of the show with just them able to walk around, walk around this world that we've loved for the last 13 years uninhibited. It's frozen in time. Mm. I, I like that. I don't know. I just like that idea for the last episode. What if we didn't need to move time forward and end this? What if we could just be frozen and stuck in this moment, you know? Right. Um, and I think it's, I just like it. I like them walking around and seeing all the characters and they're all frozen. And even the characters who don't really have a presence in this episode, you get to see them frozen in time. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's nice. I really like it. Um, yeah. 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 Were- I, I never, I never realized that. Uh, I never realized where the episode gets his name from. Uh, the, the line that Leela says. Um, what is it? What does she uh, say? She says, uh, when after time freezes, uh, I don't. She Fry axes her or something, and she's like, "I don't know." But meanwhile, let's yes. Uh, meanwhile, do and I was like, let's "Oh do this. shit!" Right, right, right. <laughs> meanwhile, while we don't know what's going on with this, let's just go be happy together. And, yeah, 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 and then, yeah. and literally, the like this is is meanwhile. It's like there's mm-hmm. uh, they grow old during meanwhile. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> um, I love. I love their wedding. I think their wedding's great. I love that they move mm. all of their loved ones into the church. They get the space pope to officiate. I love uh, <laughs> Bender is dressed in a suit because he's the best man. I, yes. always, I always really like that. It's great. Uh, Nibbler's there too. Nibbler's there too. I love uh, I would marry you even if you weren't the last man on earth. Love that. Mm. <laughs> great line. Um, the music is great. I really like the music and the score during the wedding sequence. It's just like perfectly emotional. And then basically into the montage of them living out their days. Um, 
I love it, man. I love this sequence. I think the frozen world sequence where they're really like just growing old and like their long extended honeymoon is so beautiful. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, I wasn't sure if this was like they go to Niagara Falls and there's a barrel falling off, which is funny because in Overclockwise, the last potential finale, Fry like does that. He gets in a barrel and goes over Niagara Falls. I was like, is that a reference? (laughs) Is that that a reference to that? It probably is. Um, The shot of the snowflake is so great. Yeah. yeah. Um, Yeah. I really love the shot of the snowflake. The the holding hands and walking over the ocean which kind of parallels the shot from Devil's Hands where they, in in Fry's holophoner, they hold hands and walk off together. Um, There's just good little stuff. There's good little stuff like that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's really good. Um, And then they finally meet back at the Vampire State Building. Ah, It's good dialogue here, man. I was was kind of lonely though, right? I was never lonely, not even for a minute. It's so Mm -hmm. good. So good. I love it. I love it. It's a good finale. Yeah. Uh, and they even sneak in a fucking nasty joke before the end, <laughs> which I laugh There's at no. every time uh, when he's talking about the time button. He's like, I tried to fix it, but I got mad at it and then hit it some more. I guess it's good. We didn't. I guess <laughs> oh, it's good. We yeah. didn't have children. <laughs> yeah. 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 That is, that is me. That's nasty. That's a sick that's, ass joke. It's pretty funny though. <laughs> it's pretty funny. I've always liked, I've always liked that. Like professor's talking. He's like, He's, he brings up Bender. He's like that that obnoxious robot. What's his name? I always thought that was just, he doesn't fucking remember Bender's name. <laughs> uh, man, um, so funny. Uh, and then we get the end. Like Professor comes in. I think you know they gave themselves an out. They didn't just end it here. I think they also didn't want it to be like a frozen sad ending for everyone else in the show. Mm. So Professor comes, find, tunnels through time, finds them figures out that he can go back to before they invented the time button. Um, and, uh, and we get the, the now iconic final line. We can, you know, we can, we can live our lives over again. It's like, wanna, what do you say? want to go around again. It's so good. Want to yeah. go around again. It's good. And then also her saying, I do, which is like mm-hmm. the whole episode was, I know they got married, but her, him, like, will you marry me? I do. Want to go around again? I do. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah, good. Yeah. it's good. It's good. It's good shit. Um, yeah, man. I love Meanwhile. I fucking love Meanwhile. I think it's so good. It's weird that it's not going to be the end. It's weird that yeah. we're going to get more. <laughs> it does seem like, based on the dialogue in the trailers, that they are acknowledging this ending like in the trailer in the major trailer they say we've we've experienced a major disruptment in the passage of time it would be bizarre if that wasn't about <laughs> this yeah, yeah, right yeah, yeah, be yeah, weird yeah. if that was just something else you're right, right um so yeah we'll see you'll know you'll know <laughs> by the yeah. time you're listening hey, yeah. to this you'll fucking know <laughs> you could be laughing us out the building right now for all That's we true. know you know it's true man god i fucking love this i know we kind of did a lot of we kind of did our wrap up and our talk about this whole series as a whole before we talked about mm. Meanwhile. But do you have anything else you want to say about this journey of this run of Futurama before we go into new stuff coming soon? How do you feel about this watching these last couple seasons that you hadn't seen? What do you got? What do you got? Mm. You got anything for us? Uh, it was I don't know if I've compared it to this before, but like you remember when that that Dexter's Lab uh, episode came out where they were like cursing and shit. The yeah. Root removal. Yeah. And like, I remember when I remember uh, when that came out, I remember reading somebody say that it felt really weird to watch a new episode of Dexter. Right. Uh, and that's kind of how I was feeling like for right. a lot of the, for, like uh, for, for so many years, this, like the show has just been like, uh, yeah, all these, these first, like these first four seasons and these movies and then the rest, and then meanwhile, I guess. Like, it's right. always just kind of been like that to me. Yeah, for um, sure. So, like, learning that a, all of this shit happened to these characters that I've known most of my life that I just didn't know happens. I didn't know fucking Calculon died. Twice. You know what I mean? Like, I, yeah. <laughs> like, who, I didn't, my roommate didn't know either. Like, he, he came upstairs during Calculon 2.0. I was like, oh, so he, like, died. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> that's, that's what's going on here. Like, you know, like you know, I didn't know Zoidberg gets his happy ending. Yeah, I didn't yeah. know Zoidberg got his happy ending. Like all, like all of this is cool to see all of this stuff that kind of like 
like happened in the background uh, almost that I just didn't know about. Yeah. Like, in the background of my life that I just didn't know about. Kind of lined so it up that, perfect. That, that, that now there's cool. going to be new ones. <laughs> right. That was going to be new ones for sure. Like, I, I don't know. I think, I think it was, I, think, I just, it, there's not, there's not a, not me. I mean this in like every way possible. Like there's like really not a show like this before. Like, when mm-hmm. I when I try to explain the history of this to people, like how many times it like came back and like all the all the, we talked about before, like when we top of the pod, like all the different forms of media there is yeah. of this show, like all the different ways it exists, like and it, 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 everybody's just always amazed because it just doesn't sound like it should happen, but it did, right? Like, and, it, and it's still happening. Like, like, like Billy West is Billy West like 70. Like, you know what I mean? Like, it's still <laughs> like, it's still, it's still going on. It's still happening. Um, yeah, it's true, man. So I was he just, sounds, I know, like, he sounds, I, he sounds a little old in the, uh, in the trailer, right? in the trailers, but you know, yeah. like it's whatever. <laughs> it's yeah. fine. It's just, it's just cool. I think it's just, it's just really, it's just really interesting to see all of this stuff that I had never caught For before. Sure. And, and, you know, like I've all, I felt like I always knew all of the really good, like I knew of all of the really good ones, even if I hadn't seen them. Like I knew of Game of Thrones, even though I hadn't sure. seen them. And like, I think the coolest thing about watching these was finding that Farmsworth one that like, I was just nobody say, talks about. Just like, and oh that, shit, like, this is great. Yeah. Yeah. It like, blew, it like blew, it like blew my mind. So I think that's how much I love that episode to where I feel like it go, like, doing all four of these seasons and taking a seven month break was completely worth it just so I can see that one. Yeah. <laughs> like that's how good I Hell think that yeah. one is. <laughs> man. I like these, man. I like, I, I don't, I don't know, dude. Like after, after watching them like this, it's a, it's a I, pretty solid stretch. Like there's some yeah, good ones. Yeah. I can't, I can't say that it was a mistake that it came back. You know what I mean? I know. Like I know. I'm not one of those people <laughs> that think that think it was like, uh, Futurama is shit after when they go to widescreen. Right. Like I can't, I can't say I think that way. <laughs> and even though there are episodes that I really don't like in this run, and I do feel like there's like, I just feel like there's just a more consist, there's a big higher consistency to the Fox era. Like there's mm-hmm. still so many good things in this run, which is why I'm mm-hmm. like hopeful about more. You know, I'm just like, look, they, they always have a good sense of these characters and. And there's always a story that ends up really like hitting, (laughs) and you know, and so even if there's some that don't, um, yeah, I'm eager to see what the heck the next set's like. Should we, um, should we rank? Should we rank this final, final, final final rank ever? Yeah, potentially. Well, at the end of these ten, <laughs> at the end of this ten episodes we do on the new season, we should. We're gonna rank. Those. Okay, yeah, we'll yeah. Rank. Okay, so that. that's gonna be. But this might well, be the final yeah. ranking ever. Spo- yeah. like, vague illusionary spoilers to their format being changed. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, here's mine, bottom to top. There are some things I fly like I moved around a little bit, and some interchange are barely interchangeable. But I think I'm pretty set on this. And honestly, looking at it, I'm just like. I'm, I really like most of these. Like, there's only a couple where I'm like, whatever. Like, this is a good mm-hmm. stretch. Okay. Uh, 13, 40% lead belly. 12, 2D blacktop. 11, assy come home. 10, Leela and the Gene Stock. 9, Saturday morning fun pit. 8, T the terrestrial. 7, Fry and Leela's big fling. 6, the inhuman torch. 5, Calculon 2.0. 4, murder on the planet express. Three, stench and stenchability. Two, game of tones. My, one, meanwhile. Word, we're, we're like, I don't, I don't even know if we line up. This is a, this is a great interesting. one to go out on. <laughs> interesting. Uh, I got thirteen. Uh, as he come home, At twelve. I got T the terrestrial. Eleven, forty percent lead belly. Ten, the inhuman torch. Nine, Leela and the gene stock. Eight, Fry and Leela's big fling. Seven Saturday morning fun pit. Six Myrtle on the Planet Express. Uh, five 2D blacktop. Four 
Calculon 2.0, three meanwhile, two game of tones, and one stench in stenchability. Wow, stench is your fave. Yeah, that shit. And fucks. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> meanwhile, seeing, I mean, we do have the same top three, just in exact reverse order. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, I mean, it is great. Stench and stenchability rules. I mean, those are easily my three favorite of the season. Um, that's so interesting. Wild. Um, yeah, yeah, like, stench and stenchability and game of tones are really close for me because, like, that that story the niblonian story sure. barely brings it down a little and so part of me is like stench and stenchability is maybe a little more solid has fewer cracks you know uh, mm-hmm. but but the high points of game of tones are so good yeah, it's like it's true. tough if they're they're all so close those three are so close in particular um okay here's a question yeah uh actually let's do a few questions Let's do just to wrap out before we start talking about new Futurama next week or in a few days. If you're hearing this, you're probably going to hear our first Futurama season eight slash 11, whatever one you want to go with uh, (laughs) episode uh, in in a couple days. Um, What's your favorite episode from the Fox run? Okay, whoa. (laughs) Um, Fuck. Am I going to? I feel like I'm wrong though. Oh, I'm gonna. I we can, think, we can, we can, we can correct yeah, ourselves can, in a later yeah. episode if we need to. But yeah, I'm think, going off the dome too. I think I'm gonna say the Devil's Hands the Idol Play things. It's a good choice. I it's a great fucking the, episode. The only one I could really think of, and it's such a fucking like, duh. Of course you would pick that. But like, uh, the only one I could really think of that would like rival it because of how much I love it is uh, Roswell that ends well. Oh, Roswell is great. Uh, for, yeah. for me, it's really tough up there. It's like, I mean, there's Devil's Hands is so high. Um, Luck of the Fryrish is so high. Oh, uh, <laughs> uh, see, I Luck knew I was going to get mad. It's yeah, tough. Man. I mean, you can change. Uh, you can swap. Um, I also I am just yet. such a lover of Parasites Lost. I feel like that one's not quite as mm-hmm. high in most people's list. But it's I great. think it's a great one. But I think. I think my favorite Fox era episode is The Sting. Um, a, I love The Sting. Can't go, you so can't go much. wrong with The Sting. <laughs> you can't bro. go wrong. You can't okay. go wrong with The Sting, bro. I think I know the answer, and I think we have the same answer. Favorite of the movie era. What's your favorite? Uh, it's, 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 ben, Bender's Big Score. Bender's Big Score. Yeah. It's Bender's Big Score. Uh, it's yeah. a great fucking movie. It's so good. Um, yeah. And do you have a favorite episode of the Comedy Central era? Do you think you. Of these. <laughs> it might be that fucking Farnsworth episode, dude. What's really? That Do you shit? like that more than Stench? <laughs> Do more than I Stench think Stench I love more that than, shit. More than, <laughs> more, than, more than late Philip J. Fry? <laughs> I mean, it's fine. I love that answer. I love that answer. I might. I, know, I might. It's maybe a, maybe a little bit of recency bias. <laughs> it, I, like, it, like, it really did, like, it, like... It, <laughs> <laughs> it hit you, dude. It, I know. It, I it hit me. It hit me, bro. It hit me. I, I don't know. I, I'm a I'm a sucker for like uh, <laughs> old man emotional stories. Yeah, I sure. guess I was I was I, they they got it. Like all that like family shit and everything. Like I was like, yeah, yeah. I got it. They okay. So I I'll, I'll, I'll list a few because it's definitely that. Yeah. There's of course there's the late Philip J. Fry and then there's tension sensibility. Yeah. Uh, and I feel like there was one more. That. Oh, oh man, I'm almost that. tempted to swap stench and game of tones like now. Now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, ah, oh, do I? Yeah. I'm gonna do it. I'm moving it. Change my order. Game of tones is three. Stench stench abilities two. <laughs> but they're really <laughs> close. <laughs> um I know there's another one that I really like. And I Lethal Inspection. Lethal Inspection rips. That one's the, great. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's great. That one's Let great. The, uh, let's look at the list. I know it's been yeah, a while. I'm about to get those, and you haven't seen and you haven't seen those episodes as uh, as many times as like the classic stuff, so I'm sure right. it's like yeah. Um, I re- reincarnation the the that anthology one where they change all the it's styles is such a great one. Um, I'm trying to think what else I really like the Prisoner okay. of Benda, uh, the one where they all swap bodies. Um, mm. Oh, you liked you really liked Tip of the Zoidberg. Um, oh, I the, did. That's my you shit. really you really <laughs> liked that one. Oh yeah, that's my shit. Yeah, That's my um, shit. I did. Like I also. That a lot. Re- I, so I guess my my favorite episodes of the, I'll list them in order that they were they came out in of the the Comedy Central era are Lethal Inspection, 
the late Philip J. Fry. Uh, you know what? I'm going to leave The Prisoner of Benda off, even though I quite like it. Um, that's not quite going to make the cut. I'm going to go with then Cold Warriors, Overclockwise, Reincarnation, which is another strong, like those are three, the three to end Cold, out mm-hmm. <laughs> that season six. Cold Warriors um, was the one I was thinking. I was trying to think of one more yeah. that I was like, which one of these, like one of them, like, there was one more episode that like affected me and it was, it yeah. was Cold Warriors. That's yeah. a good one. So, um, you know, I don't know if I've got anything in this first half of this season right seven that I put yeah. Bots and the Bees is closest. I do love Bots and the Bees. Um, oh, you know what? No, near. De- I mean, Near Death Wish is great. Let's let's keep Near Death Wish. Oh, yeah, that's, my, that's me. There. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah, that's it right we'll, there. We'll keep that in there. And then um, in this run, it's Game of Tones, Stench and Stenchability. Meanwhile, like those are those are all my all faves. Right. I, I think... I think my fave in this run is late Philip J. Fry. I think it's, that's what it is. I, it's hard. It's like, it's such a good episode, but like, Mm -hmm. honestly, lethal inspection. And meanwhile, both really high up there. There's some good shit in this run, man. There's some good shit in this run. Really Mm. good shit. All right. You got anything else you want to plug or talk about? I'm scrolling through this, uh, this Fox list real quick to see if I'm going to like hate my, this, I'm already the, the, how Hermes represented his groove back. Oh, Can't, great. Yeah, that's great, a great one. Great episode. Yeah. Yeah, really, yeah. I'm trying to think what else I guess I love in season one. I love, I mean the, the pilot's so good. The pilot. Yeah. I love a big piece of garbage in season one. Um, mm-hmm. I roommate is really good, even though that's the one that like they didn't, they, they were, told them to do. They, yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, how Hermes requisitioned his group back is one of my all-time faves. Uh, love the problem with poplars. Um, Parasites Lost, like I said. Love that one. Luck mm-hmm. of the Friarish. God, season three has so many bangers. Um, time keeps on slipping. I love. Kind of oh, love yeah, Ugh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Good yeah, one. Yeah. Godfellas. Yeah, we didn't God talk about us. Godfellas. Godfellas. <laughs> Also, just one of the funniest episodes of all time is Future Stock. <laughs> it's so good. Oh, dude, the, the guy. Oh, yeah, that, that one rocks. I love that one. I just tweeted today funny. for no real reason. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know why I thought about that, and I was like, I'm going to tweet that. <laughs> um, and then, uh, I mean, everyone loves Jurassic Park. You, I know you love mm. Teenage Mutant Leela's Hurdles. I do. Why a, why a Fry is great. The Sting, mm, incredible. Sting. Farnsworth Parabox, classic. Mm-hmm. And the devil's hands. I mean, the devil's hands is the fucking greatest, dude. It's so good. I think Spanish that's... Spanish fry. Spanish fry. <laughs> the dick joke episode. Yeah, the dick, the dick episode. Oh. So. All right. Um, I have to drive three hours tonight, so uh, right. you're welcome, listeners. <laughs> for here's, here's your three hours. <laughs> use this for your three hours, drive. That's right. Johnny, Johnny That's can't right. use it. God, why don't you guys make me a podcast to listen to while I drive? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. This has been really fun. Uh, I just and just you know what? I just want to give you guys a little send off. Like, thank you for the support. This is the end of this format. Like we are going to talk mm-hmm. about the new season of Futurama, but it's going to be episodically. They're going to be shorter episodes and then we're changing what we're doing and you're still going to like it. We're still going to be talking about adult animation. We're not going to tell you exactly what it is yet. It's a surprise. We're still going to be talking about adult animation for you. And I think it's going to, uh, it's basically going to be a way to allow us to still keep the spirit of the pod alive without, killing our killing. W- our workload <laughs> right. uh, like without destroying our ability to do our other work right. uh and also it's going to give us the opportunity to do a wider variety of shows faster and not necessarily up to us and it's a little spoiler <laughs> um <laughs> it'll be uh, you know won't, won't won't tell you exactly why but it's like it's gonna be it's going to be fun for us to potentially discover new things or look at things differently. And uh, I'm really excited about the new format. So, but thank you guys so much for all of this. Who knows? Maybe one day we'll come back and do something in this format again. For now, we don't plan on it. (laughs) Maybe, maybe once we have a bunch of episodes of the new format banked and we're like, all right, let's talk about this season or whatever. And maybe, maybe we'll see. Um, But we've done 43 43 seasons of adult animated TV. Uh, what? 
we've done 43. This is the, this is CTC 43, man. Uh, yeah. Uh-oh. It's, yeah, man. Uh, it's, I know. Oh my I know. God. You, you want to Whatever. go through? You want me to go through and 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 read them all in order? Let's oh do it. God. I'm gonna do it before we go. Even though I have to technically leave soon, this is this is the journey of our seasonal television. You know what? Okay, forty three. Because of the movies, we did movies. We did cover a There's few movies. movies, and so, but mostly, you know, in this format, we yeah, did. It's still like season, thirty something shows. We started seasons one through four of Futurama. That's four. We did did seasons one through four of Rick and Morty. That's eight. Then we did season one of Archer. That's nine. Then we did some movies. We did South Park, Simpsons movie, Stewie Griffin, The Untold Story, Beavis and Butthead Do America. So we did four movies. So only nine seasons. Then we did. Oh, and then we did the four Futurama movies. But we'll call that one season. It's four episodes, sure. one season. That's yeah. a really long episode of yeah, one yeah, season, yeah. if it is. Um, Archer seasons two, three, four, five. We also did Heart of Archness separately. That trilogy. Um, we also released a little bit of our Shrek After Dark, so that doesn't really count. Rick and Morty season five, we did. We did four seasons of home movies. We did the Bob's Burgers movie. We did Simpsons season one. Oh, we covered Lightyear. Forgot we covered Lightyear. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> King of the Hill season one, Beavis and Butthead do the universe, Family Guy season one, South Park season one, Slacker Cats. <laughs> mm, fuck out of here. Uh, Great episode, too. <laughs> Great episode. <laughs> we did American Dad season one. We did Bob's Burger season one. We did The Simpsons season 33. And now we've done, okay, I guess season 6A of Futurama, season 6B of Futurama, season 7A. And now season seven B, and that is the end of classic cartoons that curse. That was our run. It was Damn, a journey. Yeah. It was a lot of work. It's been about two and a half years since we started the podcast, which is insane. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, two and a half years. Yeah, two years. Two there. years and a few months. I was still living um, with my mama, man. That's crazy, <laughs> man. Yeah, yo. That's crazy. Uh, yeah, we fuck. will. We will be back with 10 episodes about the new season of Futurama, one at a time. In a few days, you'll hear that first one. And we're excited to talk about new Futurama with you guys as you're watching it. We're all going to be experiencing it for the first time. And then, new format. Look forward to it. Uh, we'll probably format. announce it towards the end of our Futurama run. We're going to start recording them ahead of time and getting the kinks worked out. But get excited. We're We're more excited than we've been about the podcast in a long time. And so that should hopefully make you guys excited because uh, I think the content's going to be that. better if it doesn't feel like we're just obligated to do something that is so <laughs> much work. <laughs> so time consuming. Yeah, 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 for sure. Okay. And, we, uh, yeah, oh, you know, and uh, stay tuned to my YouTube channel. I will be covering Futurama every week on my channel as well, doing breakdowns. Mm -hmm. um, and with that oh wait wait uh what you got? i just want to remind everybody uh monday monopoly Mon monopoly, monopoly monday. monday monopoly monday uh donate, every monday on my to, channel donate to Tariq's uh cartoon it's gonna be dope yeah it's gonna be great yeah it's gonna be great 8 p.m 8 p.m eastern standard uh <laughs> only on my channel eastern whatever. standard <laughs> <laughs> fucker yeah there uh, we go all, all right all right and with that, I want to thank Jake Neutron for our theme song. I want to thank Carrie Feek for our artwork. I want to thank Michael Yunez for executive producing and editing the podcast uh, and co-hosting our After Dark episodes with us, which you should check out. Please check out Cartoons That Cursed After Dark. There's 30 plus bonus episodes for you with Mikey as the co-host on everyone, and they're fun. Mikey's a great co-host. If we could get him to watch more seasons of television he would have been on more of these episodes but it's That's a true. lot of work we told you it's a lot of work, lot of work. <laughs> um and we want to thank all of you for tuning in uh whenever we decide to make an episode <laughs> and <laughs> and especially to all our cursed ones for supporting us on patreon uh we love you all thank you so much and also you very much yeah. so long cartoons that curse classic yeah. the format <laughs> <laughs>